Coming up on this episode. <laughs> yeah, let him in. Okay. Give me one reason you think we live on a ball. Just one. <laughs> okay. uh, it's okay to change your mind based on new information, guys. Of course we live on a spinning ball flying through an infinite vacuum at speeds that are incomprehensible. I mean, that only makes sense. It does so, to me. <laughs> as we go, because you guys are Globers, sorry, no offense. <laughs> you do have some crazy beliefs. <laughs> it takes that long for the light to get to us. Cool so story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they both claim, at least, to have... Yeah. Uh, space agencies and they're two countries that let's, let's just say don't like each other <laughs> for those to cooperate on this sort of scale is unprecedented you know nasa says that venus is uh, almost the same size as earth i say venus is the size of a basketball prove me wrong this is a okay. lot to process yeah, no, like I say, it may, <laughs> yeah. the globe has a huge advantage over flat earth it doesn't take any processing you could just believe it I don't even think humans have the capacity to actually cooperate on this sort of scale. Well, personally. maybe they're not humans. Ma oh. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Man. You are the one. Is gone. <laughs> I owe you a new sweatshirt. You are the one. It's the architect. <laughs> Atma, how are we doing today? We have something very, very special for you today. We have a guest from the other side of the, dare I say it, globe, <laughs> David. We'll have to wait and see. We have David Weiss. He is a world-renowned flat earther. We thought, you know, as you guys know, we've gone into many conspiracies on this podcast. You know, we love our conspiracies. But we thought we'll get the real deal on today to explain in great detail why the earth is flat. So, David, I think the best place to start really is about you. Tell, tell us about yourself. Well, first, I'm not on the other side of the globe. I'm across <laughs> the plains. So across the yeah. plains. Of course. Okay. Across the world. Uh, I'm just a normal guy. Grew up on the East Coast in America. I, you know, just live in the American dream. Worked for corporate America. Started my own company. All is going well. I was doing a podcast on the side for fun where we were... Uh, looking into deceptions of the world, I dare I say conspiracies, because people will immediately put theory after that. And uh, in the third year of the podcast, people started sending me, hey, Dave, have you looked into Flat Earth? And like any right thinking person, I would delete those emails. And then when they kept coming, I would ban them from our social media for being so stupid. And I wouldn't even click on any links that anyone sent me because it's ridiculous, right? Crazy. Right. Crazy. Of course, we live on a spinning ball flying through an infinite vacuum at speeds that are incomprehensible. I mean, that only makes sense. <laughs> it does so, to me. <laughs> so then I was forced to look. And when and I went in with the uh, with the purpose not to find the truth, but to debunk flat earth and prove the globe. And that's how you become a glober. No offense, guys. <laughs> <laughs> None taken. None taken. So uh, that's that's interesting that you, you went into it skeptical. You went into it to debunk because then you now I mean, no offense at all. But in in that light, then you went into it with, you know, a, a level head, you know, you didn't go in there biased. I went into it not looking for the truth. I went into it to prove it wrong. Yeah, because exactly, of course yeah. it's wrong. Flat Earth. We've known for 2000 years. Well, everything that we think we know is a lie. It's, un it's unreal. So today I'm going to say some crazy stuff. And I'm also going to say some stuff where you're going to go, huh, that makes sense. And what you'll realize is the crazy stuff is when I'm trying to explain the heliocentric model. And the stuff that makes sense, you'll be like, huh, that really makes a lot of sense. So it's okay to change your mind based on new information, guys. Okay? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And that actually 100%. brings me to something I wanted to do amongst the four of us. Uh, I thought that we could say between zero and 10, zero being the earth is round, there's no way I change my mind, 10 being, okay, the earth is flat. We'll do it now. And then after you've said everything you need to say, we'll do it again. And we'll see, maybe even if, even if we go up the scale one or two, Maybe that's a, a, some Success. kind of small victory. You know, you never I'm gonna know. I'm going to take the over on that. You guys are going to be well above fives, if not 11s. Oh, Good. Cool. Cool. Wow. Nice. There we go. I'm going to start. Uh, I am gonna, I'm going to put myself at a one. Okay. I'm going to put nice. myself at a one. 
I'm gonna put myself at a zero, so you've got a big job in your hands. Oh, but I'm yeah. leaving you. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm gonna start off at zero, and then yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll go into this. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you got a tough grade. <laughs> Mate, I'm open-minded. Do you know what I mean? We're, I'm going to go for a two. Okay, yeah, nice. So two zeros so, and one and a two. So the fact that three of you are, or two of you are doubting the ball just a little bit, so that's nice. <laughs> that's interesting because that's crazy in most people's mind. How could yeah. you doubt the globe? So I'm going to, I have a challenge for you guys and your listeners that are about to tune out right now because we're talking about the <laughs> dumbest thing ever. <laughs> is I'm offering a Bitcoin. If no. you take my, my app challenge and, and well, I'll get into that later, but basically um, you take the app challenge and then if you could supply me with one proof of the globe, you win a Bitcoin, all right? I mean, we Full love Bitcoin, Bitcoin here, oh, right, man. Yeah. Yeah. Right? We certainly love Bitcoin. And so Bitcoin's cruising. So here's the thing. People that believe in the globe have two things in common. One, they don't understand their own model. And two, they think what our model is, is nothing that we think it is. We as being flat earth researchers, they think that the earth is a disc floating in space, right? Nobody in the flat earth world thinks this. This is mind control. This is if you Google flat earth, you're going to end up with these images and you're going to end up at the flat earth society. The flat earth society is not flat earthers. It's a government run disinformation site to mind to control your mind and to make you laugh at flat earth and never look at it again this is what google will serve you well i'm on one right yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, yeah you've got me on board because there's yeah. there is there is most definitely up, things like that. Then, then they'll straw man us so like well what are we the only flat world we're a flat pancake with other round planets or they'll show you all flat pancake planets and then they'll talk about gravity how it wouldn't work and you walk over the edge and gravity would be pulling you towards the center nobody believes any of that the earth is stationary and does not move. So think about this. What is a, a puddle? A puddle is where water accumulates where? Where does water accumulate? At the top of a hill? No, at no. the bottom. At the bottom. And what constitutes the edge of a puddle? What 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 defines the edge of a puddle? Uh, the rim? Well, the, the land that's higher than yeah, the water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So a pond is a bigger puddle. A lake is a bigger pond. Same thing, right? It's the lake... The edge of the lake, the higher land, is the container of the water. Like a bathtub contains the water. If you got rid of the tub, the water is just going to go everywhere, and you can't take a bath. Not that you guys would take baths, because, you know, it's a chick thing. So, <laughs> he loves one. So, so the, the yeah, world who, who would take a bath? Like, <laughs> like a giant lake. So the world, all of the continents are surrounded by water, but all of the water is surrounded by land. That's higher than the level of the water. That land is known as Antarctica. Antarctica is not a continent at the bottom of a ball. It is the land that surrounds the world ocean. It's the highest land on earth. They don't teach you that in school. Antarctica is likely bigger than all of the continents and all of the oceans combined. Way bigger. Right? We live in the Antarctic basin. Right? So... Water at rest, large bodies of water at rest lay flat, measurably, testably, scientifically, provably flat. Okay, there's no curvature to water. We can have um, Navy ship captains with pencil thin laser beams targeting ships 100 miles away. If the earth was the size that they say it is, there would be a mile high wall of water in between them. But they can see these ships and target them with laser beams. Laser beams don't go up and over a curve. Same thing with submarines. They can they can put sonar, bounce off another sub over um, over a hundred miles away. There should be a mountain over a mile high of dirt in between them. So that's that's what the flat Earth is. What what then the other thing is the your model your model <laughs> um, you is you know we're spinning at a thousand miles per hour. So the earth is spinning, right? The rotation, the daily rotation of the earth. If you're on the equator, you're moving a thousand miles an hour because the earth is just over 24,000 miles around. If you travel a thousand miles an hour, it takes you, you know, one day to go all the way around. So that's a thousand miles an hour. So when you're watching the sunset, the sun's going down, you have to believe that you're on the top of a ball and you're falling over backwards, which is making the sun appear to go down. That's crazy. You're falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound. While you're spinning, you're also orbiting the sun and speeding up and slowing down, speeding up and slowing down, you know, as you get closer to the sun. And that is at 66,600 miles an hour on average, they say. 
right? While you're doing that, you're chasing the sun because the sun is flying at a half a million miles per hour, like a freaking comet through an infinite vacuum, which is crazy. Right. And that entire <laughs> system's moving sideways at one or two million miles per hour, right? All of those motions are happening and you don't feel any of them. And when you go out tonight and look at the stars, they're in the exact same position they were a year ago, right? You go out next year, same night, same time. The stars are in the exact same position. Do you guys know what the Georgia Guidestones are? Probably not, right? No. So it's like a Stonehenge thing that was built here uh, in Georgia, in the United States. And it basically has the Ten Commandments of the New World Order on it. That's a whole nother story. But it was built in 1980 or 1981, I think. And uh, but mysteriously built, it was crazy. It cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it's it has all this stuff written in twelve different languages or something. But there's this little hole that goes all the way through a long, thin, like straw-like hole. And if you look through the hole at nighttime, what you will see is the North Star. Right? We have all of these motions going on. We're traveling billions yeah. of miles a year. Mm. Yeah. But the North Star is always through that hole. If you do a time lapse, you'll see all the other stars circling around it. How could we be traveling in all of those different directions unless, and unless, have unless the North Star stay in that hole? Would, would, the, would the other stars and stuff be traveling with us in that? So Are we going, so, is, it, are we, is it just us individually going be, through it or are we go all going expanded. through it together? Yeah. So in our, in our solar system, you know, in yeah. our, so our solar system's in the galaxy. Yeah. Our solar system's doing this whole spiral dance with all the planets and we're going around yeah. our sun in all these directions. And all of the other stars are doing all of their stuff in all of their oh, different that's directions. True, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, all, it's like a crazy beehive. Yeah. But somehow yeah. Polaris has not <laughs> moved from that hole uh, yeah it's an incredible that's point impossible yeah. Yeah, i like it that that is one of the things that does baffle me and and um it, you know when you think of the north star when you think of orion's belt and things like that like you say these stars are all in the same place and yet like you say we're supposed to be going thousands of miles an hour you know hurtling around different things and stuff and yet the stars don't move that's i think that's why that that's where my one instead of zero. I think that's what it hinges on, to be honest. Um, is the is that that doesn't really make sense in the grand scheme of things? I've never even know? really thought about that. Yeah, so that's definitely that, that took me. That's to, another thing. Yeah, where, where nobody thinks about it because we were trained that the Earth was a globe before we can speak. Your parents, if they were good parents, they probably bought a mobile for above your crib, a crib of a solar system. Okay, then you watch Sesame Street and all these children's programming. They're all globe programming shows. The kids go to kindergarten. They come home with worksheets about the sun and the moon and the size and and space and astronauts it's all globe programming we're going to get to the point where you guys are going to go well why why the lie why the big yeah, thing yeah. we'll get to that, that let's save that for a little bit okay all right because the lie is the is the most important part of this story can i so, ask one question sorry just to interject yeah, uh, please do you believe in in planets other other planets so all of the planets they used to be called wandering stars and when you look at them they don't really look like what nasa shows us and uh, they, 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 if you look at, um, you know, we had the big alignment in uh, December where all the planets were in the sky at once. And you, I'm sure you guys have looked up and seen Mars, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Think how bright that looks. You have to believe that that dusty, dirty ball, Mars, <laughs> is reflecting sunlight. It's way farther from the sun than we are. It's reflecting sunlight off of that dusty, dirty planet all the way back to Earth where we, we're seeing it as brighter than any star. That's crazy. Right. And then we have this rover on Mars and you can tell this uh, this is from the rover because it, it caught the corner of the rover in the camera. Mm. But this is a hill in Greenland. OK, is that that's it, legit that's as legit, well? Yeah. That's really? legit.
That's legit. Na- yeah. We're going to destroy NASA. Destroy <laughs> NASA when we get to the NASA part of I'm it. I'm up for that, to be fair. Yeah. 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 And NASA is not a space agency. That's what NASA stands for. They're, not they're a literally space agency. <laughs> they're just evil. Um, and oh, wow. the, the sole reason for NASA and every other space agency, public or private, you know, NASA, RAXA, JAXA, whatever, all of these things, they all use this vector symbology and they're <laughs> all stuff. in it together. This is a big conspiracy. Right. A global yeah, are you wearing global. a NASA shirt? Am I seeing a NASA shirt? Me? Well, this, this, no, is, no, we... this is a shirt which is the Round Earth Society by Atma. Yeah, the yeah. Round Earth Society. We, we actually, nice. Yeah, we released yeah. this a few months ago, yeah. yeah. I'll allow it. So I've, I thought, <laughs> I thought uh, as we've got you on the podcast, it'd be a, a great place to, uh, yeah. to wear it. Oh, Atma Round Earth Society merch available now. $29.99 for the Charcoal Crow. $12.99 for a white or mint tea. Oh, I think I'll make myself a tea now and enjoy the rest of the show. And like I say, nice. maybe I'll get I'm it. I'm more open to change. Yeah, like I say, uh, maybe we'll we get can it. flatten that maybe, down. <laughs> maybe we'll get it changed. And uh... Next topic or you want me to bring it? You ask a question. Like why, how, got something? <sighs> <laughs> I think we'll we'll save the why for for a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but then again, my question is kind of centered around why. It, it's a lot to process. Um, with, a lot. With, yeah, I mean, with with back to the the stars thing for a moment. Um, I did just think also. Um, one of the arguments I think is like what we are seeing is actually light from stars that have long since died. And it takes that long for the light to get to us. Cool so- story, bro. <laughs> Could that not be a reason as to why they don't move? Yeah, no, because there's, there's, there's so far away. There's no parallax. That's nonsense. That's, that's, nonsense. That's, that's the dumbest thing ever. This is the star <laughs> of this, So our consumer optics have outgrown their lies. They didn't know that we're going to have super zoom cameras with 125 times zoom. And you zoom in on Arcturus. This is supposed to be a star that's trillions and trillions and trillions of miles away. But we can zoom in and see this crazy detail. And here's the star Capella. Totally different. It's pulsating with energy and geometric patterns. It's insane. And the star Sirius is slowed down a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. It kind of looks like it's underwater. And we yeah. can get into that in a little bit. But all of these stars are within the Earth system, not the Sol Lure system. Okay. That's right. a little hint okay. on where we're going later. Okay. Soul lure. Right? The, right. They're luring our souls away. Our souls <laughs> are the currency of the, of the, universe and uh that's what this is all about so these are stars right some of them are a little out of focus but it's it's really hard to get them in focus but they all have their own personalities they're all named after gods that's interesting too Mm -hmm. all all the planets are named after gods i'm sorry so so do i believe in planets well what other what proof do we have other than we see these lights in the sky the only thing we can truly say about them are their lights in the sky you know, NASA says that Venus is uh, almost the same size as Earth. I say Venus is the size of a basketball. Prove me wrong. And you can't. Wow. You, you, so we don't know how far they are or how big they are because <clears throat> you can't triangulate them because we don't really have any perspective to do that. There's you know, people that claim that they can. Here, we're talking about the stars staying in, in place. Mm-hmm. You guys, are you aware of what's called the three body problem? No, I'll explain. I'm not, it's okay. No. I didn't know either. <laughs> so you can take the world's best supercomputer and you can create a simulation. You say, all right, I got this sun. It's this big. It's got this much gravity. And I got this planet. It's tiny. It's got this much gravity and set them into orbit. And the thing will work beautifully. It, you can calculate where the sun will be in 10 minutes from now, 10 years from now, a million years from now. It works perfectly then you uh, then you enter in a third body either a, a moon or going around the planet or another planet going around the sun and the entire system falls apart goes into random mode like a beehive and it never repeats itself but all of the stars all of the planets are on a repeating pattern all of the eclipses repeat every 18 years did you guys know that no it's every not. 18 yeah. years the eclipses go through the same yeah. cycle again <laughs> yeah, yeah. and again and again so it has to be synchronized it, it's, it has to be not a random thing. Mm. 
all of the stars in the sky are spinning in a in a in I say they're in the firmament, which is the dome, but they're in fixed positions because they never change. They never change. The wandering stars, which we call planets, those those have their own paths, but they're also on another cycle, and then they will repeat also. But all of the eclipses repeat um, in an eighteen-year cycle. There's two different eclipse cycles. Um, but that's uh, that's fascinating, right? It, it certainly is. So you refer to a dome there, yeah. You, and so, and you're you haven't really gone too much. I know you're saying about space and stuff. Uh, sorry, planets and things. But uh, this could tie into one of the very first things that you said, which certainly hooked us. You know, with all the false information out there about flat Earths and stuff. I am of the opinion, which could have been fed by by the internet falsely, that. Um, Two things are required to be a flat earther. Uh, one thing, uh, gravity doesn't exist and neither does space. Right. Is that correct? So, so they tell us that space is an infinite vacuum. Uh, yeah, forever and expanding. You can't have a vacuum next to high pressure without it equalizing. The second law of thermodynamics says high pressure next to low pressure and vacuum is the ultimate low pressure um, would equalize and... You, it just can't happen. So in so we're talking we're talking talking about space first. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, yeah, no problem. I'm just trying to. Um, so people would say, how come all of the air doesn't get sucked off into space? And the answer, the only answer that Globers can give is gravity. Gravity's holding the air down, right? Yeah. Gravity must be holding it. And, you know, and it's denser at the bottom and it just weakens and it goes up. Well, that's ridiculous because at any altitude, ground level at 10,000 feet, I can take a straw, point it downwards, stick it in water or not, and just with the weak vacuum of my mouth and lungs, pull air or water up and away effortlessly from Earth, right? Like that. And I pull I'm defying gravity, but the vacuum of space can't rip all the air off the earth. Makes zero sense. If I had a box, <clears throat> um, you know, a airtight box and I sucked all the air out of it and I brought it up to any altitude and I opened up a valve on the bottom, whoosh, all the air is going to go right up into the box. That's something that you can test. How come it doesn't fly off into space? Is that I'm, I'm not uh, educated in this area at all. Is it anything to do with the ozone yeah, layer? I the ozone layer is just another layer of gas up in the sky. Ozone is lighter than the denser air that's down here. You know, as we go up, the air, the, the, the mixture of the air changes. Helium will go up higher because it's lighter than air. Buoyancy and density sort everything out. Let's talk about gravity. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they say that gravity is caused by mass and they've every test they've ever done never never works you know if gravity was by mass if i went next to mount everest and i held a plumb line it should tilt towards mount everest a little bit but plumb lines go down down is down for me down is down for australia down is not up for australia down is down down is down for everybody it's the same down down is down up is up forward and backwards left and right are all relative to whatever direction you're facing but up is up down is down so why don't we float off into space if the Earth is flat and there's no gravity? And the answer is because the Earth is measurably, the, the only true forces in this world are electricity and magnetism. They're brother and sister. And the Earth has a measurable, testable, um, provable negative charge to it. It does. And there's voltage in the air. The higher up you get, the higher that voltage gets. And that negative charge of the Earth, that light negative charge, has an attraction to it, a very weak force. It just says, hey, down is this way, very weak. Then buoyancy and density sort everything else out. If I had a handful of ping pong balls and a handful of rocks and I held them over a pool and I dropped them, they'd both fall through the air because they're more dense in the air. The ping pong balls would sit on top of the water, the rocks would go to the bottom. Buoyancy and density sort everything else out. Somehow gravity can hold trillions of tons of water and cargo ships and cruise ships upside down in Australia, but a butterfly can you know, fly away. I can jump and get away from this incredible <laughs> force of gravity. It's nonsense. Everything just sits in the basement. The earth is the foundation of the universe. Those are the best words I have. What's underneath it? Nobody knows. Nobody knows what's inside of the earth, inside the earth either. What's your so, opinion on uh, tides? Yeah. Let me, let, let me just finish what I'm showing here. So this is, we did a little test here. We have a, uh, uh, an electro, uh, a metal plate, and this is called the Van de Graaff generator, and it, we're giving this thing a negative charge. 
just slightly stronger than the Earth's negative charge, and and little pieces of wood and hair and metal will will go up because we're defying what gravity or the negative charge of the Earth. Okay, we we make that stronger than the Earth's charge. Bam, everything goes up. You ever see those tr- tr- tin foil triangles that they electrify and then they float up in the air? That's because it's not defying gravity. It's just defying the electrical charge of the Earth. Right. It's interesting. I, I, this, uh, I, yeah, I kind of, this is a I lot get, to process. Yeah, no, like I say, it may, <laughs> yeah. The globe has a huge advantage over flat Earth. It doesn't take any processing. You could just believe it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. When, like I say, when you're explaining it, it you, you're doing a very good job. And it's, yeah. It's, yeah. <sighs> Right, Jordan's fucking. Jordan, yeah, Jordan's converted already. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was yeah. trying to trying well, to go he, where you're Here's taking. the problem: you guys are smart guys. You actually have brains that work, not like most of this world that I doesn't don't know have about brains that, that work. David, <laughs> and, well, it, it doesn't. It, you guys underestimate yourself. You say, "Well, I'm not a scientist." Well, scientists are the ones. You know, the teachers are the ones that memorize and regurgitate the best. Some of them come up with their own stuff. That's good. There are some good teachers out there, but the pe- teachers that are teaching you know, uh, astronomy, they're repeating garbage. It's all nonsense. It's pseudoscience. <clears throat> there's there's a few, when it comes to science, there's a few things uh, where I think there's leeway um, to, to actually strengthen the flat earth argument. Um, so obviously science is rewritten all the time because we understand more and more as we go on. So everything, you know, what is concrete yesterday could be, could, you know, be broken today. Um, and, you know, it could, with with things that, with the whole gravity thing against, um, as you're saying, buoyancy, density, electricity, and, and magnetism, could there be, I'm just on the fence at the moment, could there be, perhaps a misunderstanding within gravity, but there is actually kind of a, a happy medium where maybe the flat earthers with the buoyancy, density, etc., are a bit right. And the people, there's certain elements of gravity that are also correct. And there is a middle ground. Well, if, if you know, buoyancy and density is testably provably right, but that works with gravity also. If, if there is gravity, whatever that downward force is, buoyancy and density sort things out because the same things will happen. But, but, um, gravity due to mass doesn't work. Ne- ne- um, the, the spokesmen for science, you know, say they don't know what gravity is. Neil deGrasse Tyson, I don't know what it is. We don't know. It's a mysterious force. And it's so mysterious that they have to make up dark matter and dark energy to mm. fill in 96 percent of the universe must be That's dark true. matter and dark energy. Yeah. Otherwise, there's not enough mass out there for their model to work. And even with that fake nonsensical matter, you know, the dark matter and dark energy, it still doesn't work. The three body problem. How come we can't model three bodies orbiting? We And that alignment, when the sun, when the moon goes in between the earth and the sun in the heliocentric model, how come the sun's gravity, which is holding onto the earth, how come it doesn't rip the moon away or at least tug it a little bit? Just pull it out of its orbit just a tiny bit. But the moon is in the same place. We know exactly where the moon's going to be. But the moon does sometimes appear at least closer in certain places. You sometimes see the moon and it's absolutely huge. Absolutely. I'm going to show you how the moon moves when I when I pull up uh, my my uh, my app for you. Okay. What would you what would you say the moon actually is in the flat earth model? What? It's cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I love cheese. I, uh, I um, I fucking hope so. Here's the, the thing: as I, as I said earlier, anything in the sky above us, all we can say is that they're lights. Because when the moon is a new moon, it's not there. No one can ever see it. Why don't we see it? How come the Earth shine doesn't light up the moon so somebody with an infrared camera or something could see it? When the new moon happens, nobody has ever seen it in less than like forty some odd hours. Right? That's almost two full days. How come the Earth shine, like the moon shine, lights up the Earth? Right? Like if you're out in the middle of nowhere yeah. on a clear night and there's a full moon, you could read by it. You could yeah, walk. Yeah, yeah. You don't even need a flashlight. Yeah. Right? And the moon, the dusty, dirty ball of the moon, this dusty, dirty ball where this <laughs> astro liar is, he is <laughs> lighting, up the, <laughs> lighting up the Earth. Yeah. Right? But isn't that so, the reflection of the sun? That's yeah, it's supposedly so the sun is reflecting off of this it's traveling yeah. 238,000 miles back to earth and we see it this bright 
The light I mean, light over distance gets right. weaker and it, it weakens exponentially. Every time you double the distance, it's a qu- it's a quarter of the brightness. Or every time you half the distance, it's four times as bright. So I can read by this in the middle of nowhere. So let's say this is one lumen. It's probably like 20 lumens, but one lumen. It's a mm-hmm. measurement of light. I go halfway to the moon. It's four lumens. I cut that distance in half. It's 16 lumens. Yeah. Cut that in half, 64 lumens. I keep doing that until I'm about 100 miles from the moon. It's like 10 million <laughs> lumens. <laughs> <laughs> quite okay? bright, quite bright. The 10 million lumens, Slightly that's generic. not 10 million lumens. 10 million lumens would melt the sky, okay? <laughs> you know, wouldn't be able to see. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So this, this is nonsense. This is right. complete and total nonsense, you know? So what, these what, guys is, it, what is the moon? It didn't just get back from the moon. These, you know, these guys went to the moon. They were hiking around. They were planting <laughs> flags. They came back. First guys ever. Did they look excited? Excited, or <laughs> you could have caught him on an off shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, caught him on an off day. It looks like somebody just hey whispered in her ear, "Hey, we just shot your dog." <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong. You're not wrong on that. That man. Uh, okay, so 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 the as far as the flat Earth uh, community are are aware, the moon is is essentially just an unexplained light. Well, it, it, it is. And, you know, we have lots of theories on what it may be. Um, I think that the sun and the moon are projected, for lack of a better word, into our sky. And we all see it in a place relative to us. So I'm gonna, let me explain this. So you guys can probably handle this. So when you're driving down the road as a kid and you go, hey, mom, the moon's following me. And your mom goes, no, it's not. You know, it just looks like it is. Well, it actually is following <laughs> Because we all see it in a different position because it's what I I say, it's a reflection. So imagine this. We're all standing outside. We're 50 feet apart uh, in a straight line. And in front of us is a gigantic upright mirror. Okay, giant mirror. And behind us is the sun. The sun is setting. It's just up in the sky behind us. So we're all looking at the sun in the mirror. So a uh, uh, another person walks up to the mirror and I go, I see the sun right there. And they draw an X on the mirror right where I circle the sun on the mirror with a Sharpie. Then they walk 50 feet over the next guy. And one of you says, well, I see it right there. And that circle on that mirror is going to be 50 feet from my circle on the mirror. They're going to see it in a different position. Right. You understand how that mm-hmm. works. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we're all going to see it in a different position. If we tried to triangulate the the, the you know, where we all see the sun and figure out our angles and everything it doesn't work because we're not looking at a physical object right if we tried to triangulate the actual an actual physical object yeah that would work and we're like okay we can tell how far it is how big it is yeah. but we can't because we're all seeing it in a different position so but you're like wait a minute how could it be a reflection when i feel the sun and i see it and that, this is where I came to this revelation. I was at a conference in Las Vegas. I'm sitting by the pool in the late afternoon. The sun is, it's like 3.30 in the afternoon. The sun is up in the sky. And I could feel it on the right side of my face. And literally, it's hot. Las Vegas is super mm. hot, if you guys didn't know. And I was, I was like, I'm going to, the right side of my face is going to be toasted. I was like, I, I, I need to turn around or something. And over to my left, 100 yards away, was the hotel. And the hotel was one of those big mirrored glass hotels. And the sun was lining up with one of the mirrored windows perfectly. And I could look at it, and the mirror, it was like a perfect sun in the mirror. And I, they looked the same, but of course I could tell which one is the reflection because I'm not an idiot. But then I closed <laughs> my eyes, and I felt the sun reflecting off the mirror and the actual sun on my face. And I said, if I didn't know which one was the real sun, could I tell with my eyes closed? And I couldn't. The heat was the same coming off of that mirror. So perhaps the sun that we're seeing is also a reflection but coming could, through the dome. Could, is that not just the transfer of, of heat and energy off of a reflective what I'm saying surface? Is, what I'm saying is if the sun is a reflection, it doesn't mean that it can't transfer all of that heat and energy. It, it oh, does. I see. Right. So you're saying because yeah. they're the same, it could be. Yeah, right. I'm, yeah, saying, sorry, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just saying that's a poss- I'm, I'm showing you that it can it's, be yes, a possible. reflection. Again, we don't know. You know, the sun is in, na- in, is in the flat earth model is electric in nature. It's like a Tesla coil. It gives us day and night. Uh, there's a difference between sunlight and daylight. Sunlight is when you see the actual sun. Daylight is when the sun is fluorescing the gases in the sky. Um, I don't have the image. The, so the sun fluoresces the gases like a Tesla, um, like a Tesla coil would fluoresce 
the uh, gas is in a bulb and it lights up. You ever see a Tesla coil? Yeah, they bring yeah, a bulb yeah. near it. It lights up. Well, the sun does the same thing in the sky and it fluoresces the gas. And the, the major gas up there is nitrogen and nitrogen fluoresces blue. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying so hard to follow. Yeah. Yeah, the sun uh, the sun one's a hard one, isn't it? Yeah, to, to, it certainly get, is. to get your head round. Okay, right. Uh, okay. Uh, right. I'm gonna pull it to a break here, just for <laughs> just to to refresh my brain. And when we come back, I've got questions. Um, I've got answers, and uh, David's got answers. So we will see you after this break, guys. <laughs> Atma, how's it going? I'm here to talk about becoming an Atma VIP. Now, you might see on your YouTube a join button. If you don't, there is a link in the description. If you hit that join button, you'll become an Atma VIP. Now, with that, you will get a one-off sign-up free T-shirt. The design looks a little bit like this. You will also get access to an exclusive members-only podcast once a month. And we have a members-only Discord channel as well. And just as a bonus, you'll get some cool badges and some emotes of our faces and other things that you can put in live chats and in the comments section. So there we go, guys. That is $4.99. You get a free T-shirt upon sign-up, an exclusive monthly podcast, that exclusive membership-only Discord channel, which we will jump in and out of every now and then, and the badges and emotes. Thank you so much. If you want to become a VIP, hit that join button or the link down below. See you soon, guys. Atma, how are we doing? We're back with David. He's still here and uh, he's going to shed some more light on, on Flat Earth for us. So, David, please take, take the floor. So we were talking about daylight and sunlight. Here's a shot from a balloon around 100,000 feet. And over here is daylight. The sun is over here and it's fluorescing the sky and, the, and they have daylight. But just over here, it's pitch black and there's no Nothing stopping you. It's just that the electricity from the light can only fluoresce so far. Light can only push so far and the electricity can only reach so far. So when you watch the sunset, I'll actually show you a video in a second. Um, it, it, uh, it takes its light with it and as it's traveling around the earth. You mentioned solar panels before. Do you know that scientists don't know how solar panels work? They have a theory right? They're, well, the photons are traveling for, you know, eight and a half minutes and they come from the sun. They take a billion years to come from the middle of the sun to get, exit the sun and they take eight and a half minutes to get here. Nonsense. Then they hit, they hit the solar panel and they knock a boron molecule out and then, you know, it gets filled with another one and it creates a current. That's not it at all. The sun is electric. It's sending electricity and the solar panel is just collecting that electricity and running it into a current. If you had a two house plants and you put one of them in front of a fireplace and one of them in front of a fluorescent light, one of them is going to shrivel up and die. The other one's going to grow. Okay. The sun is sending electricity to the earth that feeds the entire system. Everything runs off of electricity. So that's amazing, right? Th yeah. That's photosynthesis, isn't it? Well, that's they, they're telling oh, you it's called way. photosynthesis. <laughs> it's literally electricity. How Traveling can down. Uh, 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 I, I, you can grow plants in your home with UV with, light. Uh, you know, yeah, fluorescent light. lights? That's yeah, true, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. What is photosynthesis? Yeah, it's that's... a transfer of energy. It's a transfer of energy. The whole thing of photosynthesis is a lie. <laughs> I guess, no, I guess I'm wait, wait, no, no, yeah, hold on, hold on. Let yeah. me back that up. Photosynthesis, where it, you know you have the um, stuff that converts it. That's that process is real, but it's not coming from yeah. photons running through the sky. It's coming from electricity coming in and causing this photosynthesis. If you had a big enough electric light in the sky, yeah. like if a plant, could, like I say, you can plug a, a fucking because I've done it. You plug a, a fucking little light in, and you can grow your plant. Light. Yeah. You, so essentially, yeah, the sun is that giant light bulb. Get your vitamin D. You're getting raided, mate. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Grow I only got growing it. plants. <laughs> let me show you. Let me show you an experiment yeah. about the sunset. So this is my kitchen, and I, I have this line here. It's a level line, and this is my little sun, and I'm just running it along the line, and we're looking at it from the height of the sun. So it's going straight and level, and then I have these. Uh, these are just obstructions, whether they're clouds or mountains or whatever in the distance, and you know, the sun is going over them. 
So now I'm going to show you the same view, but from over here, from the level of the counter, which would be the plane of the Earth. And so as the sun goes away, it's still level, but it looks like it's going down. And as it goes beyond these things in the distance that all are at eye level because they just everything gets mushed into the horizon, it literally disappears behind them. Yeah. So like I'm going to show you the whole thing again, a little closer. And I'm going to show it to you compared to a real sunset. <laughs> so at yeah. This line that looks like it's going down is level. I yeah. showed you that this line is level. Here's a real sunset. Here's my sunset. And as it's going away, look, it's getting eclipsed here because you can't see what's here. It's but it's blocking the sun and the sun is just going beyond it. it it's literally that simple. Yeah. So that works. so the so the, the the next question you're gonna have is why can't we see forever? And the answer is because light can't push through the atmosphere. So this is a spot in Alusia, France. We're looking out over the water. Here's the supposedly physical horizon, but it's an optical horizon. And out here is Mount Kanagu, which is 175 miles away. According to Globe Math, the top of Mount Kanagu should be a mile below this curvature, a mile. And therefore, that's why we can't see it. That's what a glober would say. But on two days a year, the sun lines up with this viewing spot and Mount Kanagu. And as it goes past it, all of a sudden, it starts backlighting it. And you can see this is Mount Kanagu. Right oh, here wow. is the highest point on Mount Kanagu. It should be a mile below the curve. But not only can we see the top, we can see the entire mountain. Oh, right? okay. Wow. And that's big, that's how light going through our atmosphere works and why we can't see forever. People say, what about Hawaii? How come I can't see this other mountain 300 miles away? And the answer is because it's 300 miles away. You can't see that far. Like if you had an Olympic size swimming pool and you made it five times the length it is, probably just an Olympic swimming pool would be enough. And you put a picture on one end in the pool, you couldn't see that picture because the light coming off that picture won't make it through the thickness of that water. Well, the air is the same thing. One more. This is a drone I put up. Super cold day, super clear, unbelievably clear day. And the sun was up here. And if the earth was rotating, the sun in five minutes time went from all the way up here. It went down, down, down. If the earth was rotating, it would just keep on going. But what happened was it went down, 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 down. And then it stopped and it sat there for 10 minutes. It just sat there. It never went below this line. This is super sped up. And then instead of going down, it just faded away because the <laughs> sun off. couldn't even push through. Here it goes again. Right. It just faded out. It's still there, but its light can no longer push through. That's right. It doesn't travel for billions of miles and trillions of years. That's cool real. That, that's an actual video of the sun just disappearing rather Absolutely. than going over the horizon. And I filmed it over seven times. You filmed it and yourself. I, and by the way, my friends at the beach were watching the sunset and they saw the sun set from the bottom up 10 minutes earlier. And the reason they saw it set from the bottom up is because they're just seeing perspective. This cloud is merged with the horizon. And as it goes beyond this cloud, you no longer can see it when it appears below it. And it looks like it sets from the bottom up. That's what that's all a sunset is. It's just going like this is this is the cloud deck or the atmospheric deck or, or a skyline, whatever. And the sun just goes beyond it. It looks like it sets because, yeah, okay. it it, that, that, perspective. that model does work. It, it's, it, it's it, it does. Yeah, yeah it's that. unbelievable. Let me let me share my app with you and, uh, and I'll tell you guys about the challenge, but. I don't think any of you are going to take it because you guys are already flat earthers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so is that uh, up on the screen nice and big? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can see it edge to edge. So we're looking down at the flat earth pond and uh, the sky is a perfect clock over, over the earth. So the sun is the hour hand. I'll speed it up. And the sun goes around once every 24 hours. And as you can see, it's gaining distance on the moon every, every day. So the sun will lap the moon every 28, 29 days. So the sun keeps track of the hours and the days. The moon, its phase and its position keep track of the weeks and the months. They hijacked our calendar. There used to be 13 months for, you know, with 13 moon cycles in it, but they, they changed it. And they also gave us clocks that go around twice a day so nobody could figure out what the hell's going on. But, you know, the clock only should go around once a day. The, the sun is the hour hand. Um, if I turn on the stars... The stars, the fixed stars in the sky, not the crazy beehive, they are going just slightly faster than the sun. 
they lap the sun once a year. So right now the sun is in between these two constellations. Pisces is going to catch up with the sun and the sun will be in Pisces for the next month. And then it'll be in whatever constellation this is. And each one will catch up um, for, for its month. And in a year, we'll be right back to where we are uh, in, you know, just before we're going to Pisces at the same time. So the stars keep track of the seasons and the years. If I turn on the time zones right now, it is midnight in uh, Central Australia. It's 4 p.m. in uh, Central uh, Africa. It's uh, almost 10 o'clock here on the East Coast in America, right here, 10 o'clock, catching up. So the time zones spin with the sun. That's how time zones work. And I just showed you how the sun you know, can't throw its light that far, so it only lights up the area that it lights up. Um, so... What I what I tell oh also you know how they tell us about um, the jet stream goes this big crazy sign you know uh, the sine wave jet stream never made sense to me on a ball but if you put the jet stream on a flat Earth model and this is the winds at ten thousand feet uh, not ten thousand forty thousand feet that's the jet stream this is what's happening right now the jet stream goes in a perfect circle almost a perfect circle, but it circles around the flat earth. Those pink and red winds in the middle there, those are like 200 mile an hour winds that are very consistent. Uh, so that's the actual winds on a flat earth. And, you know, if you want to fly from Santiago to Australia, you can go, you get up, you know, the planes that do the direct flights fly faster than they tell us. They get into these tailwinds. They got a 200 mile an hour tailwind and bam, the flight times make perfect sense. So what I tell people is take the Flat Earth App Challenge. Every day, there's a new video that shows up here. Short ones during the week, longer ones on the weekend. Watch the video every day for two weeks, and then you too will lose the respect of your friends and family. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you have a question, you're like, well, what about you hit the question mark and up come all the questions. What about gravity? We talked about gravity. What about eclipses, right? What, what about eclipses? I just clicked eclipses. Up come all of the videos that YouTube won't serve you, right? And it'll teach you all about eclipses. And this is all stuff you can verify yourself. Unlike NASA, can't ver verify anything. Um, it has all the questions are answered there. Um, if you hit the little web button, up come all sorts of other stuff. If you have kids, click this button here, Flat Earth Man. Watch the videos with your kids. And now uh, they too will be ostracized from their friends and yelled at by their <laughs> teachers. Okay. But Goodness. you will learn uh, so much from Flat Earth Man's music. And then there's all sorts of biblical stuff, fl uh, mud floods. I don't know if you guys are into that, but that's amazing. You can do experiments yourself. You're like, hey, you go down to the beach and you're like, hey, I can see that smokestack. I know how far it is. So you go to the curve calculator. So I like, click the curve calculator. Up comes a curve calculator. And I can say, okay, that smokestack, uh, my, my height is six six uh, feet, um, uh, 50 miles, calculate, uh, there should be 1,473 feet of curvature. How the hell can I see that smokestack? I know that it's not higher than you know 500 feet. So that, right. that'll prove right there that uh, you're seeing too far. Over here, interviews. You guys' interview will be here when it, when it airs. Cool. Uh, Thank you very you much. You click that and up come all the uh, interviews that I've done recently. It goes on and on and on. Excellent. Um, and it does a whole bunch of things, different languages for, you know, playlists of videos in different Finish. languages. Now so, we've done oh, it. Oh, wait, one, one more thing. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <laughs> compass, the, 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 the flat earth. You guys wanted me to explain the flat earth a little better. Yes, please. The north. The magnetic north is the center of the flat earth, okay? Right. So all if you put a compass down anywhere on that map, the needle's going to point towards the center of the flat earth lake, right? If you want to go east or west, you got to remember that that compass has to always point towards the center. So east and west are circles. When you head east from New York, you have to keep turning to the left to maintain that, deg that 90 degree heading. You're just following your compass. You think you're going a straight line, but you're going 90 degrees. And guess what? You came all the way back. You think you went around a ball. You just went around the lake. West is a circle. What you can't do on a flat earth is you can't go from Santiago over uh, uh, Antarctica and pop up over here in Australia. And guess what? Nobody's ever done it because you can't. If you go south, south is away from the center. You go out. What's out there? 
We don't know. It's off limits. The Antarctic Treaty, uh, there's nobody, no corporation, no person is allowed to explore independently outside of the edge of Antarctica. No one's allowed to go out there. And that's in place until the year 2041. One more thing on seasons, and then uh, I'll let you guys go. I know I've been rambling. The... This outer yellow line is the Tropic of Capricorn. This inner yellow line is the Tropic of Cancer. So when I, if I hit the little jumping guy and I go to April, May, June, in June, the sun is over the Tropic of Cancer. It's closer to the inner northern world. So it's higher in the sky. If you had two airplanes flying parallel to each other, uh, 10,000 feet, one of the airplanes is over your head and one of them is just 50 miles to the south or whatever. The one over your head, that's your summer sun. It's high in the sky. It's close. The one that's out south is lower in the sky. Even though it's the same height, it's lower in the sky because it's farther away. Perspective makes it look lower. It's farther away. It's our winter. So if I jump to December, the sun goes all the way out to the Tropic of Capricorn and the outer land is having its summer. It's going right over Australia. They're, have, they're in the heat of their summer while we have a distant, far lower sun because it's our winter. That's how seasons work. It's very simple. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Did I, there you go. Is that, is, that by, is that by design? Is, you know, with the seasons, is that, you know, is that, is that just... Explain. Say again. Uh, is, you know, obviously you say that the sun uh, is... Is the sun just there naturally, or is it just is it yeah. by well, is the, it is it by design? You know, obviously seasons creates a lot of money, doesn't it, on on Earth? Like, you know, oh, I well, the, so you yeah, say yeah, is, um, is, this, is, yeah, is there something that's making it do that, yes. or is it is, so, is so, it a natural is it a natural occurrence? occurrence? That's a great question, and the answer is yeah. Whatever created this place. So here's the re- here's the why. When, when you think that you live on a spinning ball flying through an infinite vacuum, which is impossible, you think that you were created because lightning struck, created some DNA that turned into an amoeba, that turned into a fish that grew legs, that found another sexy fish that grew legs, and it turned into a monkey that turned into a human, you are a, a random accident of nothing, and you're on a speck spinning through an infinite universe in a distant god or godless universe, and... Uh, that you know, an asteroid could take us out at any moment. We're going to run out of dinosaur juice for our for our cars. More nonsense. <laughs> Nuclear bombs could blow us up. More nonsense. Terrorists. More nonsense. All of this stuff is to keep us in fear and to hide the Creator. Because the truth is, we are at the center of creation. This place is intelligently designed. What would, what would be less spectacular than this place being a random accident when you understand what it is, is a tornado going through a junkyard and building a fleet of 747s on its own. Okay, That would be less spectacular because this world is intelligently designed. Who's the creator? That's your own journey. You figure that out yourself. Maybe I don't know. Maybe you don't know. I don't know. But it is intelligently designed. What they don't want us to know is that We are these spiritual beings having this soul's journey. Our soul is here having this experience in this physical meat suit that we're having. And our brains need to connect with our soul. But when when our minds are hijacked, put into a mental prison, the globe, and hijacked by television and all of this crap, um, you lose your way. And the, the goal of our lives here is just to maintain control of our soul be a good person help your neighbor don't kill anybody don't don't steal from anybody you know that's basically it just be a good person but the the people that are running this world are hiding the creator and making you give up your free will they can't take anything from us including anything there's there's nothing they can take from us unless we willingly give it so right now What's going on in the world is insane. People have lost their minds. And the way they're getting away with it is people are lost in space, spinning out of control, and they have no idea who they are, the power power of their mind. And they're just succumbing to all of this complete and total nonsense, even though if you look into what's going on in the world today, everything that they're telling us, they've already admitted is bullshit. They already admitted, you know, what's going on is... None of it makes any sense when you actually look at the details, but people are too lazy to look at the details. Just like you guys never looked at the flat earth or the globe earth, people aren't looking at what's happening in the world right now. So why why, with all the stuff going on in the world am I talking about flat earth? And the answer is because if we ever get our freedom back, 
how long can we keep it if we're lost in space, spinning out of control and don't know where we are? And the final thing, thing I'll say is it's a, the analogy I use is, you know, the documentary with Keanu Reeves called The Matrix. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Oh, Atma Simulation Black Crow, $29.99. Black Tea, $12.99. Red Pill, Blue Pill, what's it going to be? I think we all know what type of pill Loz is going to take. Head on over to the Atma website now for all your merch. So oh, yeah. at well. the beginning... Neo is lost. He's trapped in the Matrix. He doesn't know who he is, where he is, what he is. He's depressed. He's laying in bed a lot. And uh, then by the end of the movie, he figures out who he is, where he is, what he is, and the power of his own mind. And that's what they don't want. They don't want us to know that if we all united and, and used our minds, they would be nothing. They would be lo lose control. They've hijacked our minds and stolen our divinity. <sighs> He's in. That's go. it. Jimmy's That's it. You are the Shirt one. Gone. <laughs> I owe you a new sweatshirt. You are the yeah. one. It's the architect. I, uh, okay. I, there's, there's elements of what you just said that I can get on board with. I don't know if the destination is the same. So I'll quickly explain. So I, there are certain things like what you're saying there about, you know, putting ideas in place to, to maintain control um, and, and things like that uh, to, to diminish hope, etc. Um, I kind of saw it on a much smaller scale. Uh, I saw uh, things like, uh, you know, the lottery. Uh, I see the, the lottery as an idea. You give people, uh, you know, oh. the... the the hope you give the working class people hope that one day they could become a millionaire and so they're going to buy that ticket and then all yeah. they wait till Wednesday and they might win oh they don't win but they could win next week so we'll hang in there and they never really go and achieve more than they or achieve what they could because they're holding out on well I might win the lottery one day and some people do of course they do because they need to keep the idea alive <laughs> But uh, so I uh, that's where I'm on board with what you're saying with so, with the control element but it makes let me sense. Add, let me just add to that. Let me add to that for real, real quick. They also give us sports teams. When I was you say go that, yeah. and you cheer for a sports team, your subconscious thinks that you have vi have a victory. They have to give us victories. Otherwise, yeah. our, we will rebel. Not so England, when your England sports World team Cup. wins, you won <laughs> and you're, yeah. you're happy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. You like, you know, because it gives, you know, you look forward to, to, to football, which is normally on the weekend, which is normally when you're not working, you know, and and, right. uh, and so I do completely agree with that element. I'm not saying that, that, that it is fact. I'm just saying that it would make sense if that if those were tools for control and i i understand where you're coming from like the whole lost in space spinning you know losing our divinity and stuff but it's still to make up the idea of it being a globe i i, I can't connect the dots there I, I don't understand why they would do that and also i think it's a very pessimistic view to be like we're, we're traveling through space spinning out of control lost when the idea of space being infinite and there being other planets and life forms out there and stuff that's it, infinite possibilities is exciting so let's talk about infinite possibilities real quick perhaps NASA's not lying when they say they want to go to outer space. Maybe the outer space is just across the plane to where there's extra territory, oh. extra terra. Oh. Okay. Uh. So maybe there's more lands out there. 
Yeah. Maybe. Maybe they've just tried to con- like an area. Let's figure out a, a space we can control, get sorted out, and then and once then we've got the control, out. then we'll then we'll start to branch right. out. And, and there's lots of stories about you know the Iron Republic, which is lands beyond Antarctica. Here's another view. Maybe there's another sun out here. Maybe the sun out here is Mars, and the moon is Venus. And maybe out here the sun is Saturn, and the moon is Jupiter. And we're just seeing reflections of them in our dome. And these are the outer spaces where the extraterrestrials from the extra territory okay. come from. We're getting a big Game of Thrones here. That oh, yeah. makes more sense than anything. Yeah. The secret space program is just the outer spaces. All of the biggest telescopes in the world are in the far south. They're out, out in South America. And they're not looking up. They're looking out. They're looking towards the outer space. That's why Elon mm. Musk is digging tunnels, mate. Elon okay. Musk is a <laughs> yeah. puppet. Okay. Oh, puppet. Yeah, I, was saying, oh, I wanted to know your thoughts yeah, on yeah. Like Elon, so, so Elon Musk. Here, and... You know who Werner von Braun is? Uh, Werner von Braun yeah, is a yeah, scientist yeah. Uh, yeah. that uh, Nazi paper scientist clip, was brought he? over to run NASA. Right? And on his gravestone, he all it says is Psalms 19.1, which says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Right? That's talking about the, the firmament is the dome above us. Why would a Nazi scientist, rocket scientist, have that? The other thing is he wrote a book in the 1950s called Mission, um, The Mars Project. And what, what that was is a story about um, a bunch of people that went to Mars and started a colony there. Okay, And this is the rocket he shows. And it was run by a guy named Elon. Ah, okay. This was written in the 1950s. And Elon Musk... This is the rocket he's going to go to Mars in. Kind of looks the same, if you ask me. Right? This is predictive programming. Like Arthur C. Clarke wrote about satellites. And then a few years later, all of a sudden we have satellites. And people are like, oh, yeah, satellites make sense. And they don't predict to program you to expect something. Then your brain might reject it. And they can't afford yeah. to do that. Yeah, so I'm they, on board. You know, I'm- the, the royal guy that in, that came up with the concept of dinosaurs in the 1800s or <laughs> I forget exactly when it was. Um, he came up with the idea of dinosaurs. And then a year later to the day, he discovered the first dinosaur. Come on. <laughs> I don't Come know on. if I'm ready to reject dinosaurs just yet. <laughs> That's it. But, but with the predictive programming, uh, I have a theory when it comes to aliens uh, that you know in Hollywood and 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 stuff, this image of you know the grey or green big head dude with the big eyes and no nose and the little mouth and the three fingers, all this has been like programmed into us. So for when the, for when if one rocks up, no one's gonna. It's not gonna be mass hysteria. They'll be like, that's an alien. Which I know, obviously, kind of. How do you know that I didn't come from those lands beyond Antarctica? I'm an extraterrestrial. <laughs> you can't prove it, right? How do you know, right? I hope you are. You'd have told us. You know, oh, the, the oh, Space Force, right? Space oh, yeah, Force. Star Trek, isn't it's it? Gotta be real. This is the logo, Star right? Trek. This is the logo of Star yeah. Trek. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Yeah, programming, 100%. Yeah. It, it, it's, predi- it's, it's unbelievable yeah, yeah, how yeah. dumb people are. It, yeah. it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, quick one, David. Have you ever been uh, encountered by anyone from like, is anyone in the government or anything? Tried come at you and, say, yeah. and said, you know, oh, you need to calm down with what you're doing. Anything you know, like that? that's my biggest fear. My biggest fear is I, I get a knock on the door and they're like, hey, you know, you got a cup of coffee. Like, <laughs> hey, Dave, here's the deal. You got to calm down and we're going to we're going to give you your own home on a beautiful island in the Caribbean and tons of money. Yeah. And uh, just go there and be quiet. That's my biggest fear. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't know how I'm going to say no to that. At least you're you're honest. doing a, you're doing a lot of interviews. Oh, you a like lot. I'm doing like 20 a week. Smashing out, man. Yeah. Smashing out. So, so uh, again, there's things that we can test. You know, like here's a oil rig, 9.4 miles away, viewer height one foot. The there should be 59 feet of curvature out here. But not only can we see the bottom of the oil rig, we can see the water for tens of miles beyond it, where there should be hundreds of feet of curvature. Yeah. We can see too far. That's testable, repeatable. Mm. provable by any person there's no curvature so how many stretches of flat water does it take to make a sphere Mm. yeah there's there's definitely questions there 
So when when yeah. do you think that we're going to be going beyond the wall, David? What's the well? So so the, uh, we talked about the Antarctic Treaty. You know, nobody's allowed to go beyond this line, sixty degrees south. Now you can pay ten to thirty thousand dollars to go for a couple of days. There's a whole bunch of companies that you can do a sightseeing tour, but they're all owned by one company. So that's fascinating. They'll take you to this this little peninsula here, which is gigantic. It's huge. It's probably half the size of England, and they'll show you some some uh some icebergs and they'll show you some penguins and then they'll bring you over here and they'll show you a ceremonial south pole but you can't prove that it's the south pole because compasses don't work and gps doesn't work and then they'll kick you out nobody is allowed to go out here and you, until the year 2041 yeah, so where you they'll mentioned kick it down the road yeah. another 60 years so 2041 what do you think will happen they'll just rewrite it they're gonna yeah that'll be kicked down however there is there, this. This is what's going on now. We can. This is going to transition us a little bit. There. Um. This is a cycle that repeats every hundred years. Every hundred years. There. Um. Right now. You know. In 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 nineteen twenty, we had the Spanish flu, and uh. You know. Everybody was wearing masks. Everybody was getting vaccinated, and there was a massive die off. In eighteen twenty, there was cholera. Same thing happened there. In seventeen twenty, there was the plague. Right. So every hundred years, all of a sudden, there seems to be some great reset. Right. I think the Internet kind of got away from them this time. And the information there's always been flat earthers around, you know, like we haven't known the earth is flat for 2000 years. Like they tell us I was interviewing this woman in February of 2020, 102 years old. And I was talking to her about the World's Fairs. And uh, she had such a great memory. I asked her, what did they teach you in elementary school? She knew the school, the teacher, the kids in her class. And she said, they taught me the earth was flat. This is in Connecticut in the 1920s. So we did some more research. And uh, then she goes, and then they changed it. And she just believed them because her teacher said they changed it. And uh, we found uh, a woman in Croatia who said in the 1930s, all the schools taught flat earth. And we found newspaper articles on microfilm that, uh, uh, that said that, teachers were being persecuted and threatened with jail for trying to teach heliocentrism in their early 1920s, you know, in the early 1900s. Okay. They hijacked us. There was some sort of world reset. There was a worldwide civilization here uh, in the 1800s called Tataria. And they've separated us. They divided us. They divide us by countries. They divide us by religions, by races, by sexes, by sports teams. They're dividing, dividing, dividing. And now they're dividing our families. You can't visit your grandmother. You can't visit us. You know what's funny is I this video went viral and everyone, all the flat earthers like, hey, there's not many people that can remember that, that are alive. We only have like a very short period of time to talk to people like this. And so everybody go to old age homes and find lucid old people centenarians and interview them and guess what happened the next week covid nobody can go to old age homes worldwide i may be responsible for this entire lockdown oh, <laughs> david <laughs> you know, what david. a dropping bunch david david um, i do have a question that will backtrack ever so slightly to uh, the the picture of of um the flat earth and then what is maybe outside and the dome yeah. the, the dome etc um first question might be a little bit personal um you don't have to answer it of course are you a religious person david uh, absolutely not like i would listen to a podcast before i discovered the flat earth and i'm like this is great stuff i'm taking notes whatever it was conspiracy information health whatever and then they'd mention the bible or the quran or whatever <laughs> yes. and i'd rip out those three pages throw them in the garbage unsubscribe and never <laughs> listen to them again because they're religious kooks yeah i'm not religious mm-hmm but That's I good. understand that this world is created. Because that, yes. that, that, that leads into what I was then going to say, oh, yeah. because I that. That's my I'll tell you where I'd be open to it, um, is if, because you say we're in a dome, et cetera, if, if, if there's like a, an alien civilization out there and we're in a Petri dish and this flat earth is, is the Petri dish and it's all, you know, Controlled by them. Controlled by them. So that's your higher being, you know. Uh, Absolutely. Well, maybe, you know, so I did a talk and it's on my channel. My YouTube channel is initials for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. It's just D-I-T-R-H. I I did a talk with uh, researcher Sophia Smallstorm and we, we, we theorized that maybe the earth is just a frozen sheet and in the center, the sun is born out of the earth crazy it's hard to hard to realize and it measure it 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 melts out this pool and the sun oscillates as i showed you on the app 
you know, in and out here. So it's circling around, it's oscillating, and it, it melts, it melt, keeps everything here. So you have this whole civilization here. And then one day, the sun decides to move out here and only oscillates out here. All of this center part would get freezing cold. So what will these people do? They'll all migrate outwards. So the entire civilization moves out to this outer ring now where the sun is now out here. There's few people left in here, Eskimos, people just, you know, in the dark, it's cold and whatever. And 10 years later, 100 years later, whatever it is, a new sun is born. And it's their savior, the sun. And it brings life back. And so now you have a new population. It remelts out another puddle here. And this puddle knows nothing of this puddle. These people know that there was something in here. I don't know if they know there's a new sun or whatever, and they can figure it out. But these people are all ignorant and they have no idea what's in the outer space. That's mm. very interesting. That actually ties, oh dear, that ties into a theory that I added in my head the other day about um, ancient Egyptians and, and all those ancient civilizations. They, they that all seem to migrated outwards. Exactly. Because what, basically what I was thinking the other day was, what if there was some kind of, what if our technology did advance, advance, advance thousands and thousands of years ago, then there was some form of uh, cataclysmic or uh, event of some description, which kind of wiped all of that technology and stuff. And we almost had to start again, or in what you're saying there, we moved out and then the, you know, or 200 reborn. years ago, not thousands and thousands of years ago. Think about this. <clears throat> so all of this outer part is frozen. The sun moves out. Right. Antarctica, remember, it's 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 200 feet high of ice just to start. It's bigger than all of the oceans in all of the world. So if the sun moved out, all of Antarctica would melt. All of that water would go down. Great flood happens. The entire thing gets mud flooded. You guys know about mud floods? No. no so on the app on the yeah. second page oh, there, my, go to Zakaria, mud yeah. floods. And, and there, there, it's not a theory. The world had a cataclysmic mud flood where everything was buried in mud. And then the new civilization kind of just, there's buildings today that have windows underground. Why is that? It's because they were pre-mud flood buildings. And those wind, they were buried and just never on, they just rebuilt a new door on the second or third or fifth floor or whatever. And the, there's, there's stories and stories below the ground with windows that used to be above ground. So that's the reset. Everyone travels outwards. Mud flood happens. If you look up the, you know, the, I don't know if you guys know about the Bostock saga, basically it talks about all the life starting in the middle. And if you want to, um, if you want to tie this to astro theology, the sun, the S-O-N, and the S-U-N have very similar stories. If you look at all of the stories of all of the religious leaders, you know, Jesus, um, you know, there's like 50 different religions. They all die on the 21st of December and are reborn on the 25th. Well, our sun dies on the 21st and then it comes back on the 25th, it starts coming back inwards. So it's the same thing. Like if we go, if you and I are standing at the water watching the sunset and we're 50 feet apart, you're going to see the sun walking on the water to your feet. I'm going to see the sun walking on the water to my feet. I look over at you. I don't see the same line you see and you don't see the same line I see. So one might say we're having our personal relationship with the sun, right? The sun warms our heart, feeds us, gives us life, makes it so we can see. Right. Same thing could be said about, you know, Jesus and all these other religious leaders. Yeah, there, there is a lot of um, overlap with different religions and it is all tied yeah. to worship of the sun, etc. And, and I'm not saying that these religious leaders didn't live. They did or they didn't. They're there. My my belief is that our souls come from the heavens above, from the stars. Maybe the stars are souls and maybe the sun in the sky is the son of God. And that soul came here in different forms, Jesus, Muhammad, whatever, at different times, having their physical experience, shedding light on the world. It's a better world. It sounds like a better, a better world than just dying. This and... world is amazing. <laughs> and here's the thing. They have us living in fear, right? Fear of nuclear bombs, by the way, which are fake. Oh. Fear of running out of dinosaur <laughs> juice, which is not a real thing. Fear, you know, fear of... Uh, Terrorists, most 99.9% .9 of the stuff we hear about terrorists is not real. Fear of running out of food. We live in a magical world. This is how magical the world is. You can go in your garage 
find a seed that your grandfather stored in there in a jar, 50 years old, whatever. Take it, stick it into the dirt in your ground. <laughs> then the most valuable substance in the world, which is water, will fall from the sky and food will grow out of the ground. <laughs> There's no food shortage. There's intelligence shortage. Yeah, yeah, there's absolutely. people that are just don't. Well, the grocery store doesn't have food, therefore there's no food. You're an idiot, okay? <laughs> yeah. Not you. I'm just like <laughs> no, people yeah. have no idea where food comes from. Yeah, it comes a lot from of the people ground. don't don't ask the questions, do they? Yeah, you know, no, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's yeah. kind of what we do on this podcast. Yeah, we ask. We like to. Yeah, yeah, we like to ask. Question lot, everything, lot. answer nothing. <laughs> 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 that's our slogan. <laughs> It, and, and here's the thing: we have we have these flat Earth conferences all over the world. We're having one in March, uh, March 27th in Greensboro, North Carolina. For anyone in the United States that's listening, and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of us there, and the people come from all walks of life. There's just all different ages, all different people, kids, adults, whatever. And I always say, if I drop my wallet there and it was loaded with cash, I'm confident somebody will return it to me with all the cash in it. Well, that's I wouldn't be confident here. anywhere else because all of the people that wake up to flat earth, for some reason, they see that there's no fear when you're not living in fear. You're not selfish. You're not nihilistic. You're, yeah. you're, you're a better person. Now there are good people that think that we live on a ball. You guys are good people. Thank you very much. You think Thank we live you. On a ball. <laughs> but, I, but, but there's, when you're living in fear of shortage and death mm. and all yeah. of these things, desperation, um, you you become you know you're a, you're a different person and that's yeah. what they want they're, they're literally hiding that truth and the power of our minds so I, I know you guys probably want to wrap up pretty soon give me one reason you think we live on a ball just one <laughs> okay. uh, i know you're gonna shoot it down but the pictures from the space station. All right, can can we can we can we do we have a few minutes? To yeah, go yeah, that? jump in, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> go, 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 go. yeah. We got time. You don't mind going a little hey, long? Hey, we're on your time. We're on your time. All right. Well, we we can go as long as you like. Right. Cool. Um. So all so NASA admits they have no photos of Earth from space. They admit it. They they admit that the photos that they have are made in Photoshop. The guy that made the blue marble. <laughs> said he made it in Photoshop from strips of data. Here's two shots from NASA. Look at the United States. It, it's twice the size over here. And it, this one's tilted back. So when you tilt something back, it gets smaller. It doesn't get bigger. Okay. Um, that's crazy. But if you, look at, if you look at the other one, if you look at the, this one, and I, and I show you, um, here's something that we could actually measure. We don't have to you know, trust airplanes and whatever. We can drive across Mexico and, and measure this distance on a boat and drive across Baja, and it's 934 miles. Science tells us the diameter, straight line through the Earth, is 7,917 miles. I should be able to fit eight and a half of these in between these two lines. Eight and a half of those doesn't even fit on this page. Jesus. So either the Earth is tiny, half the continents don't exist, or NASA's lying, and that's nonsense, right? Yeah. Here, here's Jupiter. Two shots that are over two years apart, and every single cloud is the same. These are two shots from NASA. This one, hey, we discovered the Northern Lights. This, look at this, ridiculous. I could have done that <laughs> better for them if they asked me. Okay? <laughs> but every single cloud, see this little wispy cloud right here? Yeah, it's right it's there. Exactly same. Yeah. It's the same and the red spot. exact picture. They're too lazy to even make a new friggin' picture. Right. Yeah. Either they're mocking us or, you know, that's just uh, them needing to let us know. Here's a, a close up of these clouds here. They're stepped and repeated clouds. All of these things are stepped and repeated. It happens on all of their pictures. They use the same overlays again and again and again. It's it's insanity. Right. So, you know, and, and our minds are easily our, our minds are easily tricked. Well, you see this. This is Jupiter. Right. Okay, is it Jupiter or is it a meadow with dust? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no, I I'm just saying how, how very easy it is. Uh, and then if we look, uh, if we look at the shot. space station, <laughs> yeah, that would be good if, on the show. If we space look, at, sorry about that. Sorry, I, I I love doing that one. We might uh, have to steal at, that image off you and put it on the shirt if that's okay. <laughs> um, the the space station, they they're constant. Everything they show us from the space station is. Um, is a deception. So while I'm looking for that, this is uh this is us creating a Earth better than NASA, just doing it in Photoshop, and and we could do that. 
but this goes all the way forward. We make a better looking Earth than NASA. So we do it in Photoshop. Here, here's a, a shot from the space station. How come we don't see any continents down here? What would you guys say if you were Globers? It's just a bit over the sea. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's over the sea, right? Yeah, but we yeah. know it's a space station because we can see the solar panel. They always show us yeah, yeah, something like that. Okay. Or <laughs> yeah, they do. Or with zero do. budget, yeah, <laughs> we just take the picture from our front yard and hold yeah. the solar panel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that's uh, how easily we yeah, are yeah. fooled. Yeah. They're doing all sorts of stuff. This is woman. She's talking to kids. Watch right here. Is there a stuffed animal here? Oh, now there is, and now she's playing with it. All right. This is called augmented reality. They're playing with CGI objects, and she's looking either she's either looking at a screen in the background or through um, virtual contacts, and she can manipulate these things in real time. And they fit them into the into the. That's how they make things float around. Sometimes they use all different techniques. That's crazy. Um, here is a, this is a famous experiment where he's squeezing water and it's, it clings because he's in zero G. Yeah. But here's somebody doing the exact same experiment on a, on a zero G plane. You're going to know what a zero G plane yeah, is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they do the same thing. And here, this guy is bouncing up and down just like these guys are bouncing up and down. He's supposedly on the space station and these people are on a zero G plane. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. This guy is on a zero G plane, but he's in front of a green screen. This is all green screen. These are both zero G planes. It's, it, I mean, the, the amount of fakery is un, unreal, unreal. So I feel like this leads into a natural question. Um, for this, obviously, you know, NASA and all the, the all the other, um, what would you call them? Space, 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 agencies. space agencies. That's a lot of employees to keep up the lie. Well, that's the first lie. The lie is that NASA has, you know, 50 or 100,000 employees. They probably have 500 employees and probably three quarters of them have no idea because they're all compartmentalized, right? You don't know um, what's going on at the top. Uh, so it, it's it's unreal. Listen, on the app, if you go into uh, the fake space program or, or the NASA program, I have stuff about rockets that will blow your mind. These rockets that we're seeing are CGI. And they're, they're a combination of CGI. They're a combination of the people that are seeing it in real, you know, uh, in person. They're, they're 10 or farther, 10 miles or farther away. But these rockets are actually blimps. They're rocket assisted blimps or, or they're miniatures depending on the situation. But they're, they're, they're blimps sometimes. Sometimes they're a combination. Like this is a real picture of a rocket. Now we zoom in and this is CGI, right? Where's the thrust of this thing? This thing is listing up millions of pounds. This wouldn't just be going, billowing around like that. And then we watch this thing and then something really weird happens. So I don't know if the people on the ground could see this or they're showing this just on TV, but the top half of the rocket disappears at one point because there's a glitch, right? You think like, what what is that? I'm gonna zoom in. There's an actual glitch in the CGI. That's one of many that have happened. I have seen many glitches in different yeah. pieces of footage. Yeah, yeah and they'll say, "Well, that's a compression artifact. That's a you know that it's the the excuses that they make are are endless. Like these guys at the end of their speech, they're all hanging from wires. All of a sudden, <laughs> they glitched wow. out." And then they cut away, they cut away to uh, mission control. These guys were flipping their hat around talking and way in the distance, this guy floats by. So I zoomed way in. You could barely see him in the video, but I zoom in. He's hanging from a wire. You can see this belt like and it, the yeah. wire. <laughs> it does look <laughs> like it. You can unwind that all the way to we never went to the moon, right? There's two grown men in diapers in here. This took off from the moon. I never tested before engine and is connecting with the orbiter, right? Or is this a rejected piece of a cartoon from, from South Park? Cause the animation isn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's endless. Well, the, the amount of fakery here's a, a guy going around a corner and we slow it down. Watch. You can see through his arm. <laughs> no, no. Okay, because there are no corners on a zero G plane. So he went there and they, they faded him out. It goes, it, it goes on and on and on. There's, there's so many things. Watch this guy grabs his wire. 
right? Something goes wrong and he has to grab his wire. This guy flips over and, and then falls because he's not balanced properly on his wire. <laughs> oh, if you were yeah. in space and you went yeah, like this, we, yeah, you'd go change. flying backwards. You wouldn't pivot around an axis point. These people are, are hanging from wires. I think there was also, um, was it Red Bull or it might have been Elon who sent uh, the, the, like the fl- flying car into space with the robot in it? And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if it's fake or, or I don't know if this bit was was um, faked for a for a viral clip or not. But I'm pretty sure there's a frame. You go frame by frame by frame, and then there's a one frame where it's just a green screen, and then it cuts back to being oh, in space. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that is one thing. And then the the Earth glitches, but the car doesn't glitch. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a one shot where you have this beautiful curved Earth. You can see like the whole Earth, but they're not even up as high as the space station. And the space station never sees a full curved Earth. Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. It, it's so ridiculous. Now, think about this. Pretty cool he sent a Tesla into space, right? Well, there's Tesla dealerships all around the world, or all across the plane, sorry. Pretty cool he sent a Tesla into space, right? Well, there's Tesla dealerships all around the world. All around the world. All around the world. Every single decision you've ever made in your life, there is an alternate reality where you went the other way. Like, and the branches of that, so like you say yes to one thing, no to another, and there's another branch of reality where you said yes and yes, 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 yes. Well, there's Tesla dealerships all around the world, or we're all across the plane, sorry. All around the world, or we're all across the plane, all around the world, all around the world. All around the world, all around the world, all around the world. Sorry, all around the world. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. And there, they, um, that would be a pretty cool poster, don't you think, in a Tesla dealership? Hey, this uh, car went to space. Yeah, yeah, There's not yeah. a single photo in any Tesla dealership of that. It didn't show up on the co- front of National Geographic, Omni Time, Newsweek. The pictures are nowhere to be found because it's ridiculous. And Elon, in his press conference, said, watch this guy rotate. How, this, he's hanging from wires. You wouldn't rotate like that, okay? Um, he said in his press, press conference, you can tell it's real because it looks so fake because we'd have better CGI. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said in the press conference. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake. Yeah. yeah. See him pulling we, on the wire there? Basically yeah. saying that he would be able to yeah. fake it. Fake it better yeah, yeah, yeah. than what it actually was. Yeah. So watch this guy. This guy screws up and this guy quickly pulls a ball out of his pocket. Look over here. Look at the ball. Look at the ball. <laughs> watch. When, when she starts like her, her wires get out of control, she's freaking out. Watch. I'll show you again. And this guy quickly tells him, pull out the ball. Watch. Watch. Pull. Kick the ball. Look, there it is. Look here, everybody. I'm spinning a ball. Right? Because she was out of control. This girl's freaking out. I remember when this happened. These happen all the time. There I do. so weird. It goes on and on. Yeah. So Let me ask you guys. Here's a question most people can't process. Okay. Okay. So here's the equator. The equator is 24,000 miles around. It's moving. So you're moving at 1,000 miles an hour if you're sitting on the equator, right? Mm -hmm. So if I was sitting at the North Pole, I wouldn't be moving 1,000 miles an hour. I'd just be turning around once a day. So I have no (laughs) linear motion of 1,000 miles an hour. You with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I was on an airplane on a runway at the North Pole, I'm not moving sideways at all. I'm just basically sitting still. And I flew to Ecuador. And I wanted to land on a runway that was oriented north-south. So this runway is moving sideways at 1,000 miles an hour. How do I land on it? (laughs) Gravity? (laughs) I mean, there's no answer because you can't land on it. All the FAA manuals say treat the Earth as a flat, non-rotating plane. Yeah, I've never thought about that the way you right. want to say about it rotating, obviously, yeah. as it comes in. How, yeah, how is it to explain that? Is it, is it not? Uh, I'm trying to think. If yeah, this is real, I really, I, I did a, 
degree in biology. I should have done, I should have done, I should have done fucking biology physics. Biology is real science, by the way. Yeah, astronomy yeah. is pseudoscience. I took four <laughs> years of astronomy in college. Oh, really? I was so good at it that the girls would come to my room. I astronomy did well for me in college, right? <laughs> I, would, I would teach them and i knew i got straight a's it was amazing it's pseudoscience i had yeah. four years of complete and total bullshit I was, I was i was gonna draw the comparison uh if say if we allow for, for gravity and things like that they say that the earth is contained and, and stuff like that um similar to you know if you're on a speeding train and you stand up in the lane and you jump yeah. You're in the same spot, even though you're hurtling forward. Could you not apply that argument to the aeroplane? Because it's contained within the earth. It's spinning so with it, it. How does it gain that extra thousand miles an hour of sideways speed when it's flying south? It's got to speed up sideways at a thousand miles an hour. It's not. It's it's crazy. It's, none of it makes any it, sense. No, <laughs> none of it. None of it makes yeah, any see, any sense at all. So we're spinning. Here, here is a, yeah. fly the other a magnet. And then you can do this experiment yourself. Get a magnet, put it at the center of a, a map, and then try to push it east or west. And you see you have to keep the needle pointing towards the center. So east and west are circles. That does not prove the Earth is a globe or flat because it works the same on both. Right. Okay. It's only when if you try to go dead reckon in one direction that every straight line is south. If I left New York heading east and I didn't turn my wheel at all, I'd be heading south. Because if I leave, I can't, I can't do it here. <laughs> it's Inver all inverted, yeah. <laughs> so if I leave New York and if I go in a straight line, look, that's going in a straight line. All of now, I'm going south. It's going south because the needle has to point to the center. Every straight line is south. And I, as I said before, you can't go from Santiago, Chile, across Antarctica. You can't go. Nobody, this is the shortest path on a globe. And people say, well, you can't fly over Antarctica because of the treaty. All right, you just stay out here and go by these islands out here and just come around. And that would be the shortest, the shortest path. But that's not how airplanes go. They go all the way up here, all the way across and down. If they want to go to Western Australia, check this out. This is insane. They go all the way up here. They go all the way over to Europe and Dubai and then they go down here and they call that the great circle route, right? That your main brain melts. Like, why don't they just go across here? Cause this is really close on the globe. But in reality, this is what it looks like. So if I move, if I go to Western Australia, I go all the way up across the United States, Europe, Dubai, Western Australia, mm. bam, straight line. Airplanes fly straight and level over the earth plane does that mean that all the pilots are in on it so uh, again on the on the app what about all the pilots and scientists we have testimony from many pilots that say they know the earth is flat they uh the Qantas pilots the australian pilots they uh talk about it amongst themselves because they you know in their lounges because they all know but they can't talk about it publicly because they will lose their jobs. We interviewed on the show Globe Busters, which is a Sunday afternoon show here in America. It's anywhere. It's on YouTube. Um, where we interviewed a KLM pilot and she was telling us how she knows the earth is flat and all the reasons, how gyros work, everything. She did a three-hour show with us. Next day, she was grounded and fired. Oh, my Jeez. goodness. Yeah. Why is it they can't fly over Antarctica? What does the treaty... What's the well, because, what's their reason because, behind it? Because... You, they, they because of the treaty, they say it would cost millions of dollars and it's too dangerous and too cold. No, the answer is the reason you don't fly over Antarctica is because you can't fly over Antarctica. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not at the bottom of a ball. It's okay. the outer rim. And they, so they don't want anyone to know. They, the, the, what, here's, here's a very telling um, thing. Guinness Book of World's Record gave out the, a, uh, the world's record for the first southern uh, circumnavigation, um, if I could find it. So the the world's record, <clears throat> excuse me, for southern circumnavigation, and where is it? Where'd it go? Um, and it's the most ridiculous thing. It starts up in the north. It goes down, you know, all the way down to Santiago. It goes to... Uh, Antarctica, and then instead of continuing over Antarctica, they just turn around and come back. Now, here it is. 
So it goes up here. They go all the way down over here, these islands, Santiago. They go to Antarctica. Then they turn around. They come back. They go up through Brazil, up here, and back around. And they got the world record for circumnavigation. <laughs> that doesn't look like southern circumnavigation. This is what it looks like on a flat earth map. And they got the world record for southern That's circumnavigation. That's insane. Yeah, that is, that is baffling. So I've got, I've got something which I want to say. Obviously, what, what, what's the next stage then? You know, if, we, if we've got all this evidence that the, that the world is flat, what can us as a, you know, what, to, yeah, to, well, well, to I'm get only out. one person, what that, can I do? That's what I'm know? saying. Like, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. how do we, is it, you know, you have to, you rise up together, you build in, well, build one, in an army. One wake, awake person in, in, amongst a million sleeping persons is way more powerful than no waking people. So when you wake up, you're like Neo, you unplug from the matrix, you stop feeding them your fear energy. And, I'm on this mission. You know, I had uh, my own business. I had, I had, I manifested before I knew the earth was flat, um, my own business. I was doing super well, making high six figures. And I walked away from it all to be ridiculed talking about the flat earth. It's transmuted. I'm having a, the, great, the greatest time ever as I'm losing my voice. Um, in the way the world is right now, if we don't wake up, we're never going to regain our, regain our freedom. And if we do, we're not going to keep it very long. Right? Cause if, if there's a reset that happens, which it looks like we're going into right now, have you guys looked into the, you want to talk about conspiracies. You looked into deagle.com. Into what? Sorry. No, no. Deagle, D E A G E L.com. It's a site that predicts uh, gross national product and population. Okay. And it came out and we saw it, we found it in 2017, and it showed America at 327 million people, and then the forecast for 2025 was 100 million people. That's oh, really? a lot. And of Europe, death. I think, is like 65 million going down to like 15 million Jeez. in 2025. Yeah. Um, right. Well, that's concerning. <laughs> yeah, super concerning. Yeah. And it's like you know, the they want to depopulate the Earth down to 500 million people. It's not like they have it written in stone. Oh, wait a minute. They do have it written in stone in Stonehenge, right? It had it written in 15 different languages, never let the Earth's population rise over 500 million again. So that's a deep conspiracy. And we, we kind of like, like, how the hell are they going to depopulate the Earth? There's almost 8 billion people here, you know, down to 500 million. That's pretty drastic. But if you start looking at the real population numbers of the world, I think there's less than 2 billion people on this on this earth. I think it's way less than 2 billion. What makes you say so, that? Well, if you look at, you know, how, uh, you know, the, the, the birth rate and the death rate and the number of people and you go back and, you know, don't even you don't even have to factor wars and all sorts of stuff. There's no way there's this many people on the earth. You fly across America, it's empty. It's empty. There's nothing in the middle. There was a, so, there was a drastic like, exponential rise in statistics, seemingly, wasn't there, over the last 100, 150 years, which is yeah. odd. Yeah, Bill Gates' yeah. favorite book is How to Lie with Statistics. <laughs> 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 and oh, and also, uh, my other thing was, you know, what can what can the world look like do you have do you have like a vision or or like a, uh, what what you want to achieve uh, you know obviously you you're giving out all this valuable information to everyone but do you have like a yeah i have a i i envision a world where you can leave your keys and your money in your car and the money actually not even being a thing and that you can um see every person on the street you know, no one's afraid of anybody and um everybody's helping everybody you know communities grow their own food and we we you know we get use of free energy technology that was here you know 100 150 years ago 100 years ago you know the world's fairs that i was in, interviewing ruth about um were lit up with free energy there was no wires they were lit up she said it lit up the whole world it was amazing she lived in the dark before them but that was a transfer uh, from old technology to when they hijacked it from us, you know, JP Morgan, one of the most evil people, you know, on earth, he, you know, made power. He cornered the, 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 the copper market and shut down Tesla because you couldn't bill for free energy. 
right? They control us with electricity, with food, with fear, um, and imprisoning our minds in a heliocentric prison. Amazing. No, I think that, like I said, that was just something that I wanted to, I think people need to hear as, you know, why, why obviously, you know, the Flat Earth Society is so passionate about. Yeah. Yeah, because flat I think that's society not, I think is that's, not don't the flat ah, society. Yeah, no, no, that's you what I mean. Yeah, yeah, sorry, no, it's but like I mean saying the N yeah, word. Yeah, no, yeah, sorry, no, okay, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. You did, sorry, Jimmy. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, that, that's that's what I meant. Just like yeah. obviously, you know, people like you that are talking about this sort of stuff. I think sometimes the actual truth of why they're trying to do it and yeah. it goes under the radar. Right. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you and, know, and that actually reminds me of what I wanted to ask because you alluded to it at the start. Do you want to take a moment just to clear up the difference between? You guys and this uh, government-funded uh, front, as you as you said, yeah, flat Earth uh, society. You know, uh, uh, when Obama was in office, uh, a half a dozen times in his speeches, him, John Kerry, they talk about the flat Earth society. They make jokes hmm. because that's programming us. Oh, flat Earth, flat Earth society. Let me look up flat Earth, and people will actually Google yeah. flat Earth society. But if you Google flat Earth, you get all of this propaganda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if anyone, if you try to research flat earth right now, there's so they've taken so many turns in the punch bowl. You can't find any fruit. There's, <laughs> there's hundreds of videos going up every yeah. week yeah. Um, of nonsense, just stuff yeah. that will tire you out. And you're like, ah, oh, that's it. I'm not looking to flat earth. It's just a bunch of infighting. It's just a bunch of stupidness. Yeah. And yeah. you have these paid trolls out there. Like your video is going to get trolled by yeah. people that just follow me around. Yeah. And what you'll notice is, They'll make comments. Weiss is a scammer. The you know, flat Earth is stupid. There's no proof of flat Earth, but they'll never offer a proof of the globe. Okay, yeah. You'll, so the, 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 when you see these comments, just reply to them. Say, is that your best proof of the globe? Because they have none. And then you'll see people that'll comment on everyone's. They'll like they'll respond to like fifty comments. <laughs> Go to that person's channel, and I guarantee you, there's zero content on that channel. It's a yeah. bot. Yeah, right? oh, we'll buy so it. We, then, want, we want the algorithm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we want yeah. it to get seen. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. you're going to get seen, but it just just when when someone says something that's yeah. anti, yeah. I'm all for anti flat Earth comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But bring bring bring, bring some evidence. receipts. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Some friggin' receipts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. So. Uh, you know, we can see too far, testable, measurable. NASA says the sun's 93 million miles away, right? No way to test it. No possible way. The way they figured out the sun was 93 million miles away is one day Venus, which is about the same size as Earth, transited the sun and people from different coasts watch it and it started and ended at different times. And they did some math and they figured out how far away the sun was. What's wrong with that equation? What's wrong with that equation? Is it where we go round? Is it where we go round the sun? Or something? Well, yeah. here's what's wrong with the equation. Let's say you have a million dollars in the bank, and I double it every day for three days. So tomorrow, how much money will you have? Two million. Two, then four. And the next and day, eight. four. And, and the next day, eight. Sixteen. No, four, eight. No, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm, I'm quadrupling. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll be whatever. spending a lot. So, of so money you're, you're right. So, <laughs> so you have eight million dollars in the bank. And that's a fact, right? Eight days, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. that's because we started out with an assumption, and that assumption is Venus is the same size as Earth. They start out with an assumption, uh, they do an incredible calculation, and that's wrong. That they're just making assumption. an assumption. My assumption: Venus is the size of a basketball, and it's you can't just prove as me right wrong. As them, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know how the the Earth is this big giant ball, and yeah. the and the I mean the Sun is a big giant ball, and the Earth is a marble next to it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if I brought the sun, if we're out in the middle of the ocean on a tiny little island and the sun was a mile over our head, it mm. would fill the entire sky, right? Giant ball is just, mm-hmm. that's all we would see. It would be the entire sky. So now we move it 93 million miles away and it reduces to the size of a coin held at arm's length, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it reduced because of distance, yep. it reduced in size from the entire sky to this small little circle. Yeah. yeah. If I made it twice as far, how much smaller would this get? Half the sun. A lot, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I made it eight times farther, eight, could you see it? It'd be tiny. It'd be a speck. It would. Well, it, we can we can actually prove that its angular size would be smaller than your eye can resolve. That's something right, yeah, that we yeah, can yeah. prove scientifically. So if you do the math. So, so remember that distance, eight times farther. Yeah. Now, they tell us when we look up on a clear night, we see billions of stars, and they're, oh. they're, some of them are like our sun, some of them are bigger, some of them are That's smaller, farther. and we're seeing them with our naked eye. Do you know that the closest star, the next closest star, Alpha Centauri, 
the next closest star, which is all the other stars are magnitudes farther than that. But the next closest star is 40,000 times farther than the distant sun that I just described that we couldn't see. I, the next yeah. closest star is 40,000 times farther. Okay. That's insanity. The, the, close, the closest star, ready for this, is 25 trillion miles away. How, far, how, how big is a trillion? How, what, what is a trillion? People are like, oh, I heard a billion, trillion. What's the difference? Huge difference. Yeah, how long is one trillion seconds? Uh, yeah, so is it a thousand a billion, guess. a trillion? Or how long is how a trillion? Years? Just take a guess. Uh, if you guess it within a day, oh, well, within a, day. a Bitcoin. Uh, 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 one, uh, no, uh, 10,562 days. I'll say like years. I'm yeah, gonna go for, for like I'm gonna go for a hundred years. All right, it's thirty one thousand years. Okay, yeah, yeah. One trillion seconds yeah. is thirty one thousand years. The closest star is twenty five trillion miles away, and the and the uh, USA is in debt seventy six trillion dollars. Okay, this is all made up garbage, nonsense, control, mind fuckery. Are we seeing that with the stars? That we'll see, what we're seeing is the light aren't we that's travel so it's only th- so like some of the yeah. stars could be supposedly <laughs> yeah. yeah some of the stars could be gone they could be dead obsolete but you're still you're still going to get that light travel the same as you get the eight and a half minutes from the sun cool story bro <laughs> Yeah, she <laughs> fell for the same hole I did. Yeah. That's what I so, told her. So this is yeah. what we can yeah. see on yeah. a nice, you know, in the middle of the desert. We see these stars, yeah. but from the moon, we see nothing. What we're okay. seeing is stars within the Earth system, not the Sol Lure system, the right. Earth system. Uh... We've sent balloons up with high def cameras looking up. And when you think the higher they get, the be- brighter, the better the stars are going to be because it gets clearer and clearer. But when, by the time we get to 50, 80,000 feet, there's no stars. They're all gone. Why do you think like, that if, if it is constructed of some sort, why do you think they would put it there? Because it would make... Why, it, why were the stars put there? Uh, yeah, like, what, like if, they're, if they're not sort of... What, I think if you want to make it simple. My personal opinion is stars are souls, okay? Okay. And that, that they're, there's ener- everything's energetic. There's wandering stars. They're all... You know, the astrology, I used to laugh at astrology. How's the position of Jupiter or the retrograde of Mars going to affect my life? It's a rock, you know, millions and millions of miles away. It can't even tug on our moon with this gravity. So how's it going to affect me? The truth is it's an energetic source right here within our world. And we're connected to all of this stuff. This is all quantumly connected. And it th- these things are the projectors of our lives. I, I don't have the right words for it, but, you know, these things do make a difference, you know, Millionaire, uh, I forget the saying, but billionaires have astrologers. They all, all the stuff that these, you know, the people that rule the world, they all do it based on astrology. Everything they do is based on numbers and times and, you know, planetary positions. They love their, their, their sacred dates and whatnot because they're, they're, they're paying attention to this system. And whether people believe in astrology or not, or, or, you know, the power of your thoughts, it doesn't matter. They believe it. They know it works and they use it. Yeah. Interesting. That yeah. Is, that That's is cool. fascinating. So, so I, oh, sorry. Go don't on, let you? your mind be controlled with cartoons. <laughs> okay. There we go. They control our mind with cartoons. <laughs> yeah. CG masters. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have one more question. Shoot. Uh, and it goes back to the ice wall and what's beyond it. If there are these lands beyond it and stuff, the people putting these treaties in place, have they, obviously it's only, uh, you know, ha- have they been beyond the wall? Are they from beyond the wall? Well, you know what? On election day, la- the last election, John Kerry went to Antarctica on election day. So what was he doing? Was he going down there to get his marching orders? I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe the the real rulers are, are living out in Antarctica in paradise. Uh, I don't know, but there is a lot of creepy stuff that goes on in Antarctica. Yeah, no, I'm pretty, I'm, I don't want to blur any lines or anything, but I'm pretty sure uh, Hitler sent a lot of teams out to Antarctica. Well, Hitler, right. They, and they talked about him having a base out there yeah. and, and all sorts of stuff. Antarctica, there's maps of Antarctica when it had no ice. So maybe oh, wow. that was before the shift of the, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe you know, at, at a time and maybe not that long, that long ago. But 
Hitler knew what's going on. Um, you know, the elite, they know what's going on. They're just not telling us. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's a lot, yeah. man. It yeah. is. Right. It is. So it's, it's amazing. Though, scale yeah. from one to ten. Don't yeah. be afraid. Okay. Uh, oh fuck. Ah, uh, there is some. But but by the way, stuff. if anyone says anything less than a five, you have to give one reason that you live on a globe. Oh, oh do I have to start? Yeah. Oh god. Ah, oh, this is annoying because my head is screaming. <laughs> It's not used to thinking. We're just taught to memorize and regurgitate. Yeah. I see my head is screaming four, which is an increase of three, but it's under five, which means I have All to right, give so a reason. What's, yeah, what's your proof of the ball? The fact that I'm struggling, I think, says a lot. Uh, I mean, because it... Oh. You know what happens at the end of these shows? People go, you know, that was a lot of information, Dave, and you make a lot of good points, but I still think we live on a ball. And I'm like, can you give me one proof? They're like, well, no, (laughs) but I still believe it. But I still believe it. Belief is the enemy of knowing. Yeah. Yeah. Belief is easy. It takes no effort. Knowing takes balls. Yeah. Also, my thing is like, what? what's the best thing to believe in? Like what's going to give you yeah. the, the, the best gift of life, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, so, no, that, so that, you, that's not good. That's no, not no, good. no. But, no, but what I mean is like, obviously you, you're saying that when I asked you about your goals and stuff, there was so from the heart and, and saying that, you know, you wanted to about, you know, uh, reusable energy and yeah. you would love to leave your wallet there. And like I say, if, if 10 is that, then I, you know, then, that's, that's, that's the where, world you want to be in. That's yeah. the world that I want to be in. And obviously, you yeah. know, you, if you don't believe if you don't believe in that world, you're never going to get there. So, like I say, I'm not going to say that I'm a ten, but I'm definitely, yeah, I, I would push, I would push up. And you were sure. a zero. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was a zero. But like I say, it's, it's, it's knowledge, isn't it? Once yeah, you, yeah, once, yeah, yeah. Once yeah. you get the knowledge, yeah. Um, and it's, again, it's like you know when I used to sp- speak about believing in Jesus or not believing in Jesus. It's like, what's the best world? You know, if you don't believe, you die, and that's it. It's the end yeah, of the yeah, world. Yeah. If you do believe, you go to heaven. That's a much a, better. A, a lot of people say, you know, hey, you got into this because you want to feel special. Well, it's nice to feel special, but yeah. that's not why I got into this. I got into this because I wanted to know the truth, and it wasn't yeah. easy when I started this five six years ago. Uh, the ridicule was unbelievable. Okay, but now yeah. I reached out to you, you know, people like you guys, and you're like. Yeah, I'll have you on because yeah, people yeah. are picking up super fast. And that's why they're pushing this agenda super fast. Okay. Yeah. You know, there's there is a depopulation event that's that's coming. And yeah. I think it has something to do with something that rhymes with vaccine. Oh yeah. goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I've got to follow the food. I'll tell you, I mean, follow. like I say, uh, you know, well, well let's like say we, we we look into all these these conspiracies and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, it all adds up, doesn't it? It does. Um, so does. yeah, I'm it's a new world order. Illuminati. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna just fucking go in. I'm gonna say uh, an eight. Fuck You're it. an eight. Yeah, man. I'm. Uh, like, I'm willing to look into this shit. I'm gonna go a bit further. And hey, the, be- the if you try to look out on your own, it's gonna. You're gonna get tired. You're gonna find so much garbage. Um, if you Google, hey, top ten reasons the Earth is a globe you're gonna Sorry. get the most ridiculous videos but there's tons of them Sorry, by we got, we got the app. <laughs> but in the app <laughs> under the debunking the debunkers we have all of those videos and we show you how they're lying we're not saying hey they're lying we show you how Why? they're deceiving you yeah how they're deceiving you like well you know sunsets couldn't happen i showed you how sunsets happen yeah. right you know they're, they're saying boats over the horizon boats don't go over the horizon it's an optical effect can i show you the boats over the horizon yet did, I, did we did we do that I don't think we know. We just did the sun. So over the horizon. look, no boat here. No boat. No boat. Right. No boat. I'm zooming in, but all of a sudden, right there, there's a boat. There's I'm going to I'm gonna zoom all the way in on this boat. You're going to see this the whole hull, and then I'm going to zoom out, and that's equivalent to the boat going away. So now this boat's going away, and watch, it's going to disappear from the bottom up. Half the hull is gone. It goes all the way up to the window and it goes, buries the boat and then it disappears. And a glober would say, you know, That's it's that. gone over the horizon, but, but it really there, hasn't. It's, it's, just an, yeah, yeah. Zoomed in. it's just an optical, an optical effect. Like, for example, if I walked around this hallway, right, 
this way. Yeah. Yeah. I walked around that hallway and you were standing right here and I gave you a super zoom telescope. Yeah. Yeah. You're Could not you zoom in yeah, on me. Yeah. You can't nah, zoom in. You yeah. couldn't right here. I flipped the hallway over. I'm over that hump. You zoom in. You're just going to yeah, zoom yeah. in on the floor here. And this is a physical horizon, but mm-hmm. it's not a physical horizon. We're seeing, we don't see a physical horizon. We see just the merging of the sky and the sea. And then if you have a super zoom camera, you can, you can open that space and see. That's I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to yeah, invest first. in it. In a, a super zoom camera, I think. Yeah, well, there's there's a the the Nikon P900, yeah. right? Is the older one. The P1000 is a massive big one, yeah. but the P900, couple hundred bucks. It's got an 83 to, 83 times zoom. You can zoom in and see amazing things. So if it, I buy that for a couple hundred bucks and I yeah. and I zoom in and I don't get the same thing, you owe me a bitcoin. Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Because that is proof. See, can you guys see my house right now? That, no, 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 no. That must be because of Earth curvature. You owe me a Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. when, when you can't see something, there could be many reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah when you sure. can see something, yeah. well, you the only explanation they have is mirage, and that's nonsense. Yeah. As I showed you with the laser beams, we've done um, mirror flashes. Just like Mount Kanagu, its light can't come to you, mm-hmm. but we've done... Um, up on the beach where we'll flash a mirror with the sun and then somebody far away can see that flash because that flash has enough power to push through oh, the thickness of the soup. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. What yeah, are you, yeah, Lars? What are you saying? Yeah, what are your thoughts? <laughs> if you just, you can, Lars, Lars you just it in. It in. You hit me for six with the information. My brain is completely fucked. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can't say that I believe... I, I'd go maximum one. Really? Okay. Well, so what's your, what's your number one denial. proof you live on a ball? The, I, I can't say it's proof, though. That's the thing. I, what that, is it? I have no information to give you that's going to go, actually, do you know what? I'm going to pack this flat shirt, flat, flat earth shit in. I'm going to go back to being a what, what I mean, what, what would make you think you live on a ball? One the reason. cooperation you would need to have mm. all of these space agencies, which are, I think there's over 70 of them, well, there's not. There's not. There's only a couple, and they're all one. What? This is the the, the 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 difference between Russia and America is no difference. They're yeah, just they're, 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 they're the, on the same team. There's a massive difference between Israel and Iran, and they well, have th- both. They both claim, at least, to have yeah. uh, space agencies, and they're two countries that let's let's just say don't like each other. <laughs> so, for those to cooperate on. This sort of scale is unprecedented. Uh, I would say, I get, I get your point that you're, you're saying there's, there's only two. There's like yeah. America and Russia. I think is the answer. They're, they're all in on it together. There, there are some rogue states. Like for example, uh, Gaddafi. Uh, he was breaking the rules, and he had, he knew the Earth was flat, and he discovered primary water, and uh, he was going to you know, destroy the, destroy the, the ruling, you know, their, their ability to rule because it, he was going to expose it all in the 1970s. He made a speech in, at the United Nations, he angry speech and he's speaking Libyan or whatever language is, whatever the language is. And, uh, he, um, looked really angry and they showed it on the news. And I remember as a kid going, Oh man, that, the, that guy, he, they're, they're like, he's going to destroy the world. But when you translate his speech, he was saying that the United Nations and the new world order was going to take over the earth and they're going to use a virus to depopulate the world and rule the world. That's what he was saying in the 1970s. They took him out. He built the largest aquifer project in world history. He found pr- primary water underneath the desert. And for 40 years, he was distributing, building huge pipelines buried in the desert, distributing water all across Africa, giving all families, you want to have an organic farm? Here's land, water, soil, seeds, cattle, everything. Organic farms were popping up everywhere. And when he finished it, Hillary Clinton and the United Nations sent bombs in there and they blew it up with depleted uranium and then they killed him. Okay. So all of this thing that, you know, there is cooperation and then there are rogue states and then they get Gaddafi, you know? (laughs) So, so again, you, you're, so your proof of the globe is you can't believe in a conspiracy this big. No, I, I, it's, we're talking like, this, if you put nine eleven against this, nine eleven is nothing. like literally nine eleven was nothing. Drop of gra- like a grain of sand. 
Agreed. The, and for me, it's it's like I said, you have like completely fried me with the amount of information this <laughs> over these two hours. But take some time and, it, and yeah. digest it. <laughs> but the the kind of the I don't even think humans have the capacity to actually cooperate on this sort of scale. Well, Personally. maybe they're not humans. Ma- oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> maybe not. Damn, okay. Pull the alien guard. Maybe they're all aliens. There we go. Follow, all right, guys. Follow drink the, some water. Follow the fish. Arguing, <laughs> arguing on. Oh, yeah. Well, what's your oh, yeah, thoughts, Dan? Yeah. I've gone from. I was a two. Uh, they, tell you what, your information has been amazing. Yeah. Like, yeah it's got, all backed yeah. up. It's. Like, it's. it's uh, it'd be nice. Oh, I'm not intelligent enough to know. Like Stop about this. That. I know that, but there's lots of like science stuff I don't understand, and and um so and I'm sure you've come up against these other like academics as well and sort of argued the point. But um based on your like your presentation, I'm definitely up. I think I haven't really got a good enough reason to go <laughs> against it, so I'm gonna kind of sit on a five. Um, but the the thing the the one thing that got me prior to this, it's not really about flat Earth, but it was like the the unidentified with the Tic Tac, and it's like if they're hiding something. Like if there's like an alien thing, and that was kind of proof. I watched yeah. that. And that's, so like, if they've got the capability to hide one or two things, like we saw those pictures with the if them if they're faking one or two things, then it then it opens everything up. Yeah, and it's like course. why it's why when I see bits of evidence like that with the odd bits of faking, and like the picture you showed with the the hill, and then the other picture yeah. with Mars, I'm like, if they do that, and that's legit, like, yeah, 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 now yeah. you've lost me. Now yeah, you've like Greenland now I'm questioning. Everything. Everything, yeah. So it's like, there's definitely, like, there's definitely cause for concern. Um, So there's this book called 16 Emergency Landings Prove Flat Earth. And it shows where, uh, you know, by by the way, all international and long distance flight routes are run by NASA. Okay. They're they're, they're in charge of all of these routes because they have to, um, you know, fake what they're doing. So this one shows that Um, All of these emergency landings landed in really bizarre places that make no sense on a globe. For example, here's a flight from Taiwan to uh, Los Angeles, and it's flying out here, and here's the Hawaiian Islands. And right about here, there was an emergency. They could have gone back. They could have landed here. They could have continued over. But instead, they went all the way up to Alaska. Okay? But if you look at that on a flat Earth map, here it is. Bam. Emergency Alaska. I have Alaska in the wrong spot, but Alaska's right here. Um, so it's a straight line. That's the same flight route. Hawaii's out here. This is the route that they take. And yeah, and, and banking in Alaska makes makes that make sense. Yeah. yeah. And it's a straight line. Airplane, not air globe. Sea level, not sea curve. Okay. <laughs> uh, the thing about this, yeah. say, I'm going to buy a... Oh, We'll go off on a, an old telescope. That that does interest me because it's. Again, You're better off buying the P900. It, the it's P9, it's better button, than yeah. a friggin' telescope. Yeah, the yeah. Icon P900. They're they're because there's a model ahead of it. They've gone way down in price. They're a few hundred yeah. bucks, and they're, it's a very good camera. Especially if you see a pretty girl a mile down the beach, <laughs> right in. Because yeah, wait, wait. If it, like I say, it should all be mathematics. And when when you get the curvature and the mathematics, like. Once you yeah. prove that maths is wrong, yeah, then you're like, then it's a can of worms. You're like, well, old, like everything's wrong. So yeah, it's interesting. Everything, every, everything's wrong. Here's uh, lights on a flat floor. Here's lights on a flat water. If you if you got a piece of plastic or metal and you know shiny and you put a light on it and get the you know look look at it so you can see this this long light, then just bend it a little bit, just bend it a little bit, and bam, it'll turn into a point light. It'll no longer be a streak. Flat water, flat line, flat floor, flat line, flat earth. Interesting. There you go. Well, I imagine that's got a lot of viewers and listeners asking many, many oh, questions. Oh, far away. Let's get this, let's yeah. get this high. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure you'll leave them all in the comments. Uh, and yeah, I'd love and, and to know. And by the way, listen, if, if someone says, you know, if you just make an insult or whatever, I'm not going to respond. I'll try no, to course. go into yeah, comments yeah. and respond. Educate. Um, there's, oh, amazing. there's tons of, uh, there's answers for all of this. And we guess, by the way, we don't know everything, mm-hmm. right? We don't, yeah. there's so much we don't know, but at least we know that we don't know. Mm, People that yeah. think they live on a spinning ball don't know anything. Mm. Yeah. What do we call them? Globers. 
Glover. <laughs> yeah, James is in. Yeah. I'll be like, James is I'll be like, fuck off you, Glover. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so Dave is going to be <laughs> Dave is going to be in the comments as well. Uh, we'll ignore all the trolls. We get them as well. No, nah, uh, don't uh, worry. They're uh, everywhere. Yeah. 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 But, um, but yeah, no, David, listen, um, regardless of whether we've been convinced or not, we really appreciate your time today. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure. Loved it. Um, and yeah, I've, I've had a, I've had a great time. Hey, I'd, guys, I'd almost say I've you, had a ball. <laughs> so, so app, this is the app. I made this app. It's it costs two dollars and ninety nine cents US. So whatever that is in uh, your fake dollars, <laughs> our fake dollars. Oh, um, you're buying me a half of warm beer in a bar surrounded by plexiglass where I can't talk to anybody. <laughs> so the um, the app will be the fastest way. And I'll be like, oh, I don't pay for apps. Go look in the app store, read the reviews. Besides the person that says, my phone from 2001 doesn't work. Yeah, you need I, I Android 8.0 <laughs> or higher and our iPhone 6 or better. Yeah. Um, and then the app works. Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, just take the daily app challenge. Just watch the daily video every day for two weeks. It's called the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. It's by Blue Water Bay. This is the icon. There's a free version um, by by some flat earth society trolls that yeah. are trying to control your mind. So if you get yeah. that, don't send me an email telling me my app sucks. Not my app. <laughs> That's not yours. Uh, and what's your YouTube? My YouTube is the initials for deep inside the rabbit hole, just D-I-T-R-H. There I have lots of short videos. I have a couple interviews on there, but uh, most of my videos are, are under five minutes, most mm -hmm. of them. And uh, just short to the point stuff. You start watching those, you're you're done. <laughs> the globe is the globe is over. You are no longer a glober. You'll be a flat tard. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, David, thank you again, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll speak again in the future. Maybe at a flat Earth convention. Yeah, Who knows? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll come over to America and say hi when we're allowed All to right. fly. Absolutely loved it. Uh, One last question: What's oh. your go-to crypto? My go-to crypto, besides Bitcoin, um, uh, one that I really like is Monero. Monero, okay, oh. cool. Monero, uh, you know, I know Monero. Write this down. I'm telling you today to buy a thousand dollars worth of Monero. Okay, right? that'll buy you like. Now it'll only buy you four. The last week would have bought you ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 a decent coin to be fair. And I I say my prediction is it's going to be. A minimum of 10x that this year. A minimum. Okay. It could be 100x. Nice. Mate, I'm, I'll yeah. even buy that. I'll get it on. And then when you next come back on, at some <laughs> point, we'll, we'll, uh, compare Monero. we'll have a compare. Is Monero and the one that, that, that you said all the, the, the underground, like the. Yeah, it's probably changing now, but it's, yeah. it's favorable in the dark web. Well, another I had a dream one you might want to look into time. is <laughs> Axion, A X I O N. Now, that's a, a very, very inexpensive. You can buy you know hundreds of thousands of them for very cheap. Yep. Uh, but uh, more risk. And then the other one is Pirate Chain. A R R R. Okay. Like a R R R. R. Right. R. It's, I think it's like twenty some odd cents right now. Yeah. Um. I got in at three cents. Nice. And but is I think it's going to go up massively higher. Okay. But again, you might lose every penny. Nah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's but all the risk. risk. This that's is the risk. <laughs> Thank you very much. There we go. Thank a little you bit very of crypto much. there as well. Right. Thank, Thank you, David. David. Yeah. No problem. Have no a great problem. day. Thanks. See you, everybody. See you, guys, man. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.